ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and lovers of drones everywhere, welcome to Thursday Night Live! Hey, Kelly Green! How you doing, hey, buddy? Hey, I'm doing great, sir. How are you? Do the dance. Come on. Break it down there. <laughs> ah, that's what you like to see. A couple over 50s dancing. <laughs> welcome to Thursday Night Live. If you're new to the stream, let us know in the chitty chat. I, what's the name of the new subscriber we just got? Uh, Uncle Jerk. Uncle Jerk. Welcome, Uncle Jerk. Uh, let us know where you're from. If you're new to the stream, if you're watching live for the first time, this is a morning radio video show disguised as a drone show, essentially. And, uh, <coughs> man, not COVID. There's going to be a lot of stuff tonight. This could be the first five hour long stream. Just kidding, Kelly. I know you got a bedtime and everything, you know. Yes, sir. Uh, tonight. <laughs> Uh, someone is going to challenge this guy for name that tune. It's not one second song tonight. It's going to be Ooh. it's going to be 80 songs. And we have a Swedish person going to challenge you. His name is Rob Muller. Are you sure his name's not Lou? Last name Zer? Ooh. I think it might be Muller time. He's pretty confident. It's going to be 8-bit 80s. All 80s songs. I was just talking songs. to Rob in the chat. Yeah. He was being all nice in the chat, and now he's going to challenge me. Oh, he's yeah. He's going to bring it. He's going to go one-on-one -on -one with the great one. Okay. And tonight, someone could win a Mavic Air 2 case from GPC. We thank them very much for sponsoring the show. Tonight, the prize for Name That 2 tune is a Mavic Air 2 case. Ashley's going to stop by and talk about her time at uh, Minefield. I've got a video from Tater that made me pee myself because I laughed so hard. And uh, we're going to have the news and lots and lots of other prizes. Prizes and surprises! <laughs> but first, it's our best sponsor of all time. The one that started it all. It is the Cadillac! Of processed meat, pigeon jerky, everybody. You'll enjoy pigeon jerky. Who's that? Pigeon jerky, oh, the no. Cadillac of processed meat. Oh, that's Kelly. It's, you'll enjoy <laughs> Not. pigeon jerky. Yeah, it is. Pigeon jerky. And you'll give your family a treat. It's balanced nutrition to help them grow. Yeah. And it's full of fiber to make them go. Here we go. You'll enjoy pigeon jerky. Pigeon jerky, the Cadillac of processed meat. Yeah. All right. Hey, you know what? Mm, no. What? Jason Shepard did a tremendous job co-hosting last week. That was one of my favorite shows I've ever just sat back and watched. He did a really good job. Jason Shepard of RemotePilot101.com. And uh, speaking of which, I took and passed my Part 107. Recurrent. Yes, test. let's talk about that. How, yeah. Can you give us your score? Was it uh, 70s, 80s, 90s? It's how'd you do? 98. What? Yeah, and I was very worried about it. Uh, very worried did about it. I tell it. you, my recurrent score, it was 78. Did, did Really? Hmm? What, what do you think was the hardest part? Oh, I thought it was so much tougher than the uh, original test. I don't know. I, I struggled. When I pressed the button, before I pressed it, I closed my eyes. I did not want to open them because I thought, I failed this thing. I know I failed it. Opened yeah. it, and it was a very pleasant surprise. Yeah, there's that moment um, where you, you're not sure. I, I knew I missed one of them, and the one I missed, I missed before, I think. Uh, maybe someone could tell me. I haven't even looked it up. Um. It was the Can question. you look up to see what you've missed? It won't tell you right there. But I was right. unsure on the question that asked, can you have a registered drone in the United States and another country at the same time? And I don't know the I answer to that. that. Yeah, I had no idea on that one. Yeah, I remember that, that question specifically. That threw me for a loop. Hey, before we get into the news, sh and by the way, XJet <laughs> is going to be the guest tonight, all the way from New Zealand. And I think it's very early in the morning there. And I, I saw him in the chat. Good to have you aboard, Bruce. And just to, so everybody knows, he absolutely does not live at 56 Arthur Street. And if you don't know what we're talking about, 
Oh, the hypocrisy. Oh, the hypocrisy. It's delicious. And we'll talk to him about that later. He's, he's beefing with New Zealand's CAA, Civil Aviation Authority, and the good old FAA as well. The FAA did him wrong. They did Bruce wrong. Uh, did I miss some super chats? Yeah, I think Rob Muller got in on the action with, uh, what is that, a two euros or two, that's not two pounds, I don't know what that is. That's it, that's a euro, U euro correct, thank you very much. I am Dutch, oh he's Dutch, oh that's oh. right, he's from the Netherlands, my bad, I'm sorry, oh, oh, I feel bad now, that's, that's like calling someone from New Zealand Australian, I think, isn't it? Well, they get so mad. If you're there from goes, there goes all the uh, ABBA and Ace of Base songs <laughs> you have planned for tonight. That's it. No, I'm I'm sorry. I was just thinking of of our buddy Lars because he was in the chat earlier, from and he is from Sweden. So I apologize, Rob. And then who else? What else? What else we got? Don't want to miss another one. Uh, Kevin Porter, five dollars. Hello from the lovely town of Kenosha, staying safe. Wonderful. Well, there's a thunderstorm passing through. Didn't knock out the power. Thank goodness. Uh, before we get to the news, I really want to share this thing from Tater. Uh, we gave away an Evil Knievel stunt cycle a few shows no. back, and he was excited like a little kid on Christmas morning, and I sent it out, and sometimes a viewer will send me videos of them receiving the prizes, which is nice. You don't have to do it, but it is nice to see where they end up, and Tater, he put this together, and uh, well, just sit back and enjoy. Tater meets Evil. Hey, baby. <laughs> is Evil? <laughs> yeah! Tell Tater Tot! Hey, doggy! Oh! <laughs> That's awesome! Isn't it? <laughs> Worn out from a whole day of playing. Awesome. Look at that. Kelly Green. <laughs> oh. He was throwing shade. He threw some stats on the screen. Yeah, he did. Thank you, Tater, for that. That is awesome. Uh, uh, Glenn the Gas Man with a, our first uh, pounder. Thank you. Let's pound it. Two pounder. Uh, a super sticker and... Rob Camarda. Oh my goodness, Rob. $20 super chat. Thanks so much. Belated birthday. Uh, happy belated birthday to videos of the minefield. Look awesome. Yes, I've got lots and lots more video from minefield from people. Oh, yes. I was just going to say, I'll, I'll be there this weekend. I'm looking forward to it, man. I've been planning. I got my bags packed. So I'll Saturday morning, I'll be there bright and early, dude. Kelly. Kelly. Yeah. Tell everybody why you weren't there because you're just you're just in Kentucky. There's people that drove 11 hours, 15 hours to to be there. Tell them why you weren't there. Uh, you want what I texted you? Sure. I said <laughs> this is gonna make me look so bad. Mm -hmm. I would rather take a kick to the groin than drive two and a half hours to hang out with strangers during a pandemic. Wow. Such a germaphobe. Wow, Kelly. Wow. Mm. We were all wearing masks. I didn't open up the kissing booth. Mm. And we didn't do dunk for COVID. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> and I think we're going to do it again next year. Ashley was there. We're going to talk yeah, to her about Yeah, I felt bad because uh, we could have gotten the band back together. So I did feel kind of bad about yeah. that. Uh, Tennessee Rocky Raccoon, $5 super chat. Thank you very much. It says, uh, happy to be here to join Ken Heron and Kelly Green this week. Here's to a great show, my friends. And with that, let's go ahead and get into the news. Stop the music. It's time for news. 
Let's head over into the drone newsroom and see what's happening in the Dronosphere with Jeff Sales. What's happening, buddy? Good evening, and lots of good news this week, so fun stuff. Uh, tonight's drone news is brought to you by GPC Custom Drone Cases, providing you with the highest quality professional cases, so your investment is always protected when it's not in the air. Custom cases also available by request. GPC, designed for life, be original, be blue. Use discount code TNL10 for a 10% discount on all purchases at goprofessionalcases.com. We'll link in the description. And tonight, someone will win this case. This is the DJI Mavic Air 2 case. You can see that it accommodates the smart controller, three batteries. This is a really nice item. GPC makes great cases. I've got the, the mini case right here. How many people in the chat have the GPC mini case? Because I just throw this thing in my car. It fell down the stairs once with the mini in it. It was fine. I'm going to give this away, uh, too, another day. And they are tough. All right. All right, so the first news story, I'm going to give a special shout-out to Matt Harris, who provided this one for us. Um, the U.S. Department of Defense has stopped using DJI drones because of fears of uh, the, the China meddling, etc., so this opened up sort of a black hole for the military and, and other uh, Department of Defense groups to be able to use drones. They recently released a list of the five other drones that are now going to be available for the military to choose from instead of DJI. Okay. And here they are. So the f first one is the Skydio X2D. Nice. The next one is going to be the Parrot Anafi USA. That's a cool drone. Yep. Then we have the Teal Drone Golden Eagle. I don't think I heard of that one. Yeah. Hmm. The next one is also a new one to me, Altavian's M440 Ion. Ugly but good, just like Volvo. <laughs> and the <laughs> last one is the Vantage Robotics Vesper. Ooh, that looks pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. So these companies now are competing for U.S. government contracts to be able to fill the gap that has been left by DJI. And just think of all the information that they can sell to China. Or not. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> all right. So uh, the next story that I, that I found I thought was really cool. This was uh, sort of unique. Uh, recently, they had some drone footage that was taken of a port and this is the port of Eritrea. Um, and what's interesting about this photograph is that the port on the left is the new port. And that's the modern one that they use. But 30 meters away from it is a 2,400-year-old port that was originally there. Hmm. So it's a really interesting video where they've captured not only the old, but also the new uh, side by side. And of course, you know, both of these things perform the same task. They were both, you know, docks, et cetera, for ships to, to, you know, jetty up to. So, um, I thought it was really fascinating, uh, to see sort of history like that. Couldn't they? Not only fascinating, still very important. Oh, dude. I was, <laughs> <laughs> that's one of the jokes <laughs> that flashed through my head and I passed on. Oh, I should have passed. <laughs> But, but couldn't they have, is, is there something that they needed to, uh, they, they couldn't build on the old one? It's like, we already got these rocks here. Let's just throw, put a few more rocks on there and make a new one. They couldn't because of yeah, history I, or something. I, I would imagine that's probably one of the reasons, you know, that, hmm. that and, you know, the modern port would be built in a different fashion than the original. And maybe the, what rem remnants were of the old board wouldn't have made for a good foundation I guess or so. a more modern. Uh, yeah. Leonard Oglesby. <laughs> thank you, Leonard. $5 super chat. Kelly Green, you could have worn a full body condom and not missed the minefield. Fun. Yeah, man. I don't think I didn't think about it. Why don't you wear your biohazard suit? I know you have several to choose from. You have, you have <laughs> your do. evening biohazard suit. You have your uh, smoking jacket biohazard suit. <laughs> You have your kicking it by the pool biohazards. He's a germaphobe is what I'm saying. Will you come next year? Even though one year ago there was a lot of potential COVID there. A year later, it could be even worse. It could be twice as bad in 2021. Will you be there? 
I can't believe I missed your birthday. Uh, for that, I apologize. Oh. It was more missing your birthday than missing, you know, right. FPV flying because well, I don't know how to fly an FPV. Well, I appreciate that. And Ashley will, be, will join us a little bit later to make you feel even worse. Okay, thanks. All right. <laughs> All right. So with support from the Naval Air Systems Command, uh, Near Earth Autonomy has partnered with Kaman Aerospace, who makes helicopters. Uh, they make the K-Max helicopter, which is a large-scale transport helicraft. Uh, they have been able to use technology to make this completely autonomous. So this large helicopter that has very strong lifting capabilities um, now is completely autonomous. And it chooses the best method to be able to fly to and from targets. And it even, in this case, chooses the best method, meth best method of where to land safely. That's neat. No, that's, it's, that's it's kind a, of interesting to see the autonomous stuff that we see in drones put in a large-scale craft such as this. Now this doesn't have a tail rotor. This is just uh, one of those wacky two... Uh... Yeah, it uses counter-rotating blades. Look at um, that. that's the so Kaman cool. helicopters have been around for many, many years. Exceptionally stable helicopters. Um, you see those used for the precision lifting. Uh, that's that's where you see a lot of the uses for those. So I thought it was eh, pretty interesting. Yeah, that's the All future right, for so, sure. <clears throat> so we talked last week about the possibility, the maybe, of a Tello coming out that might be different. But the only thing we had was a change in an app and maybe a name. Uh, recently, a photograph has <laughs> appeared oh. for what is the RoboMaster TT. Uh, it looks like it's mounted on what looks like an Iron Man uh, Tello. It's got that same red scheme like my Tello does. Yeah, uh, what's, what's that thing on the top, though? What is that? It's an 8x8 LED panel oh. uh, mounted, uh, mounted to the top of it. And I'm assuming that what is going to happen is that you're going to be able to program that to be able to uh, I, I make pictures make letters i don't I, you know i don't know um but <laughs> it it is interesting um i would love to know more about what this is going to be able to do what were some of the old tello shortcomings like what would have made it better i mean certainly the fact that if you flew it outside and a little breeze came you'd never see it again but other than that like well i mean putting it at like a 5.8 gigahertz instead of the 2.4 what just um, a two axis gimbal as well did it have a gimbal no, on it? I don't think it did. It did not. It didn't have a gimbal on it. Um, oh. But uh, you know, having uh, you know, having some you know, uh, I guess better range, uh, a barometer, you know, things that uh, they could update the camera on it. Obviously, did, did the original sort of one? Low grade camera. Did the original one come with a controller? I can't remember. I no, think, it you had to come with a controller. It was controlled by an app, and if you wanted to use it with a controller, you had to buy it separately. Mm. And it was a uh, like a Bluetooth controller that you use for games on your cell phone and stuff like that. But the manufacturer that built that particular controller actually modeled a specific version just for the Tello. And if you go out on Amazon, it, it'll actually say in the description, "Only for use in the Tello. Don't try to use it anywhere else." Very cool. And uh, Media Mike sent a super chat. <laughs> Happy belated birthday, Ken. Thank you, Media Mike. And uh, Johnny Beals. Thanks, man. In honor of International Dog Day, please get Henry a nice treat. I will. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Ashley posted a picture of her cat on Instagram for International Dog Day. <laughs> nice going. And somewhere in the room right there is Scooby, right? Scooby, come here. Yeah, here's Scoobs. Should Scooby make an appearance? Yeah. How old is Scooby? He's about nine. Nine years old. Hey, Scooby. And Come on at me. And Scooby's, hey, <laughs> Scooby's a girl, right? Scooby is a girl, yep. Oh, what a cute little muffin. See you, Scoob. <laughs> <laughs> Did, does she know that she's on YouTube? Probably not. She does not. She'd be mm. very nervous. She'd yeah. probably wet the bed if yeah, she did. Don't, don't, don't tell her. I won't. Yeah. All right. All right, so we've seen in the past concept drones that used a cage that would go around them. Uh, the most famous ones that I remember were the Elios and the Elios 2 that were made by a company called Flyability. Um, they could fly down chimneys, go through ductwork, you know, go around storage tanks, and because the cage was around them, it made them safe so that they didn't crash into anything. 
A new company, Skypersonic, has developed its own caged drone. And like its predecessors, um, this is built for inspections. Uh, but what's unique about this one this is, the, is the cage is flexible and will deform on impact to absorb energy so this thing can actually bounce its way around. Oh, cool. This is the Skycopter by Skypersonic. It's a tiny little drone that can sneak where other drones can't go. The Skycopter has uh, roots from the racing drones world, so it's very powerful yet lightweight and extremely sturdy. This drone is flown a lot like a, a racing drone, so without any kind of uh, assisted flight mode. And this foldable cage allows it to be crashing against any surface or even on the floor from uh, some height. The Skycopter can be kept stable against the surface to collect high resolution details up to 150 microns per pixel. This kind of drone and its uses are a good way to get young pilots, enthusiasts, FPV pilots to the working environments. Using this kind of technology, they can work with their capabilities to help engineers and other kind of personnel to get the job done. That is cool. I love, I love the innovation that people are coming up with for drones. You know, that, 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 that FPV drone that you have, the, the one, the cinematic one, we should get you a cage for that. <laughs> okay, all right. I take issue yeah, okay. with I take issue with that. Are you talking about Are you talking about the fact that I crashed it at uh minefield? Oh, did you? Actually, well, talking about the fact you I, crashed it multiple places. I, <laughs> I didn't crash it. No, I can't be mad at anyone. There was a lot of people flying out there, but I actually funny you should mention that, Jeff. I have video of that crash and uh there's a reason why it crashed. And maybe you can uh, pick up on it. Check this out. Cadillac a process me. Yeah, it's programmed to play pigeon turkey. Love the way that sounds. <laughs> so this is uh, DJI. It's digital. Whoa. Almost hit another one there. So off I go. Very slow, very purposeful. Everything's A-OK. -okay. Just getting me some... I don't have a GoPro on it. Or it's not on. So, there's another pilot sitting next to me. And, uh, there was a little bit of interference. And so oh. I could, yeah, so yeah, not my fault. Not my fault. It's just, just happenstance. Just signal interference. Oh yeah. It did break pretty good though. <laughs> it broke pretty good. It done. By the way, speaking of signal good. interference, we're getting a extremely bad storm here right now. So if I disappear and our power goes out, you'll know why. Okay. Well, you're not allowed well, to leave until the roof comes off. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, for signal insurance, you know, since we have XGen on here, he'll be, of course, you know, remember the fact that we used to have the little clips that we would have to put on the board at the RC, uh, where we'd fly the RC planes to identify what frequency we were on uh, so that nobody else would flip on to our frequencies. Yes, those so. were very handy. I used to live near an AMA park, and I would hang my laundry on those when people weren't flying. <laughs> very handy, yeah. All right, so using drones in the farming industry has grown by leaps and bounds. And in New Zealand, they're using drones to monitor sheep welfare. Okay. Got any more info there, Jeff? The group aims to figure out whether drones can replace the farmer in specific situations uh, by physically monitoring the, the sheep or lambs or ewes. Uh, and make sure that they are getting to the water troughs, make sure that the supplies for them are okay, uh, make sure that there aren't any predators in the area. But what's nice about this is that the amount of time that they have to spend on the ground trying to do this, this check is saved exponentially by using the drone to be able to go out and, and do this from the air. Um, this is a, a, a pretty unique way of... I guess 
simplifying some of the process that's been used for decades, you know, in raising sheep. And I think uh, I think the drones would be best suited for this. Yeah, that's that's really good. Um, thank you for that story. But uh, I have to uh, apologize in advance. This is something that I must do. It's 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 stuck into my in my comedic brain rattling around. I must get it out. So so sit back and I apologize. Oh God. So this drone comes in all shapes and sizes, right? Is the is the monitor autonomous or does it need a mother sheep? If you buy one and it breaks, do you get your money back? <laughs> Does it take skill, Jeff, to fly near sheep, or is it sheer luck? I'd stop these puns, but that sheep has sailed a long time ago. Mm. Has he ever crashed while doing this, that guy? I mean, after all, accidents will happen. Die! He's a very skilled sheep pilot. Believe you me. We're doing that. Uh, when he edits the video, can his computer handle it, or does he need more RAM? <laughs> oh! If the sheep farmer dies, does he have a last wool and testament? <laughs> mm. Are you enjoying these, or do you want to hear to tear me lamb from lamb? Mm. Seriously though, is flying near sheep even legal? Or will he end up behind bars? <laughs> Some of you are enjoying this, but it depends. Is the glass hoof full or hoof empty? Don't worry, we're at the hoof waypoint. We're only at the hoof waypoint? <laughs> What's a sheep farmer's favorite musical group? Sonny and Sheer, or Ed Sheeran. <laughs> well, I might le need to leave town after this, huh? Yeah, I guess Shut I'll up. be. Guess I'll be on the lamb. <laughs> if you didn't enjoy these puns, just try not to get all bent out of sheep. Because you know what they say: all's wool that ends wool. That was fun while it lasted. Jeff, can I have a drink of that? <laughs> I'm not sharing this. Bull and bah. <laughs> 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 all right, all right, all right. Back to you in the newsroom. How many people we'd lose? Oh, yeah, people are dropping off. Yeah, that's it. We're down to 12 now. Okay. Sorry about all right. That. So in China, <laughs> they have, uh, I guess, some rather strange, way, strange ways of inter uh, entertaining themselves, one of which happens to be a terrifying glass bottom observation deck. Um, and oh recently God. there's been some drone footage that has uh, surfaced of this thing because the walk path is glass. It's see-through. So when you walk out there, you're looking straight down. But what's, what's kind of cool about it is that somewhere along the path of this thing, they have embedded monitors that are have cameras that are pointed down so the monitor shows what is beneath it. But as you step on it, it breaks. The the it shows the, the crack, cracking glass. <laughs> yeah, which freaks people out. Yeah, I mean this this thing right here is just insane. It's nine hundred and eighty four feet off the ground. Where is and this? It, this is in China. Wow. Um, and it's uh, I don't think I have the the specifics as to how the many location. people are thinking right now that they would love to power loop this with FVV. How many people, <laughs> other than me? I mean, and look, everybody's like, uh, uh. she's like, whatever, selfie. <laughs> oh my gosh, Kelly, would you go out on that thing? Uh, yeah, I probably would try it. I wouldn't take my kids out there. I just wouldn't do it. Why? Why wouldn't you take the kids out? I just too risky. You know me, man. I'm such a low risk guy. One of the biggest regrets I have in life was letting my kids go to Gatlinburg, Tennessee, and zip line when my youngest daughter was like seven, and she was like a. I don't know, five, six hundred feet up in the air on a zip line. Yeah. 
I thought, why would I do that? That's just putting my child at risk. Okay. That's just me. Yeah, That's I, me I don't, being weird. I don't have any children, but I wouldn't put my dog on a zip line. Okay, same thing. Then. Yeah, same thing. <laughs> I bet parents hate that when people say, <laughs> I know what it's like to have kids. I have dogs. Okay, no, no. <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean, yeah. Henry's like your child, man, for sure. Nah, he's just a dog. I'll get another one that looks just like him when he dies. No, uh, he's I like, I love him. Kid. Of course I do. It's National <laughs> Dog Day. What are you talking about? Yes. So here in the United States, kids have been getting back into the swing of school. And in China, in Nanjing, China, they had uh, students heading back to school, but they decided to give them a dazzling drone light show to oh, man. welcome them back. Where can I see a cluster drone show? I've never seen one in person. i got to see one of these. This was put together by the Nanjing University of Aeronautics and Astronautics, and they used 300 drones to light up the sky, performing various formations. That is really neat. Wow. All they did for kids uh, who went back to school here was give them a mask and stick a thing up their nose and test them. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, moving on. In Israel, there was uh, some, I guess the National Parks Authority was working on uh, following along. I'm trying to find the specifics of what type of bird this was. Um, just a griffin vulture. And they had found a family of griffin vultures that had created a nest uh, in this particular area. And this is, a, 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 I guess, a type of vulture that is uh, it's protected. The, the parents of this, this, this family were killed. Uh, one was killed by uh, an electrocution when it landed on a, lighting, uh, a, light, a power line. The other one, the, the father, obviously was not capable of being able to take care of the offspring. So the conservationists had to come up with a way of trying to save the baby, uh, Griffin. And one of the things they had originally thought about was to climb up and grab the thing, you know, take it to a, a facility and protect it, raise it, and then release it later. Yeah. But that's not the best thing to do. They wanted to then try using drones to be able to reach it. But because of the cliff face, the drones... A normal drone, like what you and I would use, would hit the cliff face and and likely fall and crash. So they turned to an Australian uh, an Australian startup called Extend. And what Extend uses is they have a drone that uses virtual reality goggles. The actual drone sees in three dimensions, and they are able to very precisely fly this particular drone in and drop food for this vulture to be able to eat, thus mimicking the mom and allowing the vulture to continue to grow in a natural environment versus being, you know, pulled in and, and taken out of its its known environment. Well, that's nice. I thought this was really fascinating stuff. That is cool. There's so many good things that drones can do. Uh, by the way, I uh, also feed the vultures in my neighborhood by shooting okay. squirrels. <laughs> you think I'm kidding. <laughs> That's precious. <laughs> no, he's not kidding. <laughs> he, shares, he shares it with me. It's horrendous. What are you drinking okay, there? So, what are you, what, what, Jeff, what do you... What do you, you, got, you got some... You, you got some Powerade? What do you got there? Oh, yeah. It's, <laughs> oh, it's, it's Powerade, all right. It's Powerade, all right. <laughs> okay. All right, so... Drones have been used to uh, fight the drug uh, industry for, for quite a long time. Um, and their, their uses in South America and other places uh, are pretty well documented. But the drug cultivators, the people that are actually you know growing these drugs, have been working very hard on trying to come up with ways to beat the drone surveillance. And in this case, operations in a place called Katavu, they found 6,700 marijuana plants that had been hidden specifically so that the drone could not see it from the air. Oh, wow. Huh. So how'd they find it? Watch carefully. <laughs> okay. What, what are we watching for? You'll, you'll, you'll see the operator who's, who's operating the drone, right? And, and he's in, in the footage. But as he starts getting close to the area where it looks like the plants are all gone... When you go over to that that mush, uh -huh. that's the plant underneath. 
So they were disguising the marijuana plants from the air so that you wouldn't be able to tell that they were there with a drone. Uh, that's huh. just a constant battle now between the drug cultivators and the drone operators. Wow. Never thought of, you know, a, a grow light in a house in a basement. Nah, that'd be, that'd be too easy. Uh, Johnny Caffeine. Is that a real name? That's an awesome Johnny name. Caffeine. Hold, hold on. Hold, hold on. I got to have a sound effect for him. Yeah, no, this is great. I got to see this. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We got a super chat. Five hours from Johnny Caffeine. <laughs> oh, there he goes. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny Caffeine. That's great. Oh. All right. So last in the news, we have a drone that has been designed so that it can pollinate flowers just like honeybees. What? <laughs> Why? <laughs> well, I mean, if, if you notice, if you know that there's an issue in several places where uh, bees are becoming a little bit less... Uh, uh, they're they're going to be extinct in some areas, and of course, bees are necessary to be able to pollinate flowers to 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 continue the growth cycle. Um, and so, trying to come up with a method of being able to circumvent the the decrease in the number of honeybees, right? Uh, they've generated the idea of using a drone to pollinate flowers, and they they shoot it with a bubble gun. <laughs> Best I can tell, yeah. That's kind of awesome. The drone does the drone have to date the flowers first? <laughs> That's what they called me in college, the pollinator. Hey, quick question there, Jeff. Uh, now that's cool. Yeah. What they do? What they do is they they uh, they put the the pollen in uh, in soapy bubbles and they shoot with a toy gun or one mounted on the drone. Um, can you tell me, Jeff, if those bubbles are are they larger bubbles? Or are they perhaps tiny bubbles? <laughs> tiny bubbles in the wine make me happy, make me feel fine. Tiny bubbles Makes me warm all over With a feeling that I'm gonna love you to the end of time I'll sing the whole damn song if you want. Don't do it! No, I won't. Hours. All right, all right then. No. Hours that I spend pulling this stuff together <laughs> and I get <laughs> tiny bubbles. Did a great that's job. Just, yeah, Did a great job. Fabulous. Now, so. now, we have one more story. And uh, it's actually some video that's really cool. A lot of people sent this to me. Have you seen the video of uh, Inside the DJI Factory? Yes. Yes. This is some amazing footage. Yeah. Now, what do you, do you know anything about this? How, was this? This wasn't like... Smuggled this was out or anything. Of, of, this was posted in a Chinese social media page, and it was part of like an advertisement. But what's unique about this is that this is the first time that we have ever seen what happens inside these factories. You know what? How these drones are built, and one of the things that was completely mind blowing was one how autonomous the the whole process is, but two the fact that they're part of their testing phase is that they put the drone in front of a QR code and then it flies yeah. through a maze on its own to prove that it's okay and then lands and then they package it. It's, it's like, exactly that's... like you would imagine a drone factory to be. You picture it in your head like, oh, they're just flying around. Well, they actually are. Isn't that cool? Wow, look at that. That's neat. It is completely beyond what... I had originally I you know envisioned because I mean I've seen videos of other Chinese manufacturing places that make drones and they're nothing like this not anywhere close to what this is this this is light years ahead of what I have ever seen in in other facilities and other manufacturers yeah it's so awesome good old Shenzhen thanks Shenzhen well 
you know, those drones cost so much money, at least now you know where that cash is going. Good point. Yeah. 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 Oh, we can hear the train. <laughs> yeah. Well, while the train's coming, the TNL News has been sponsored by Go Professional Cases, GPC, Design for Life. Be original, be blue. Don't forget discount code TNL10 for a 10% discount on all online purchases at goprofessionalcases.com. And best of luck to the winner this evening getting that GPC case. Yeah, we're going to give away a DJI Mavic Air 2 case that accommodates the smart controller. Someone will win tonight during uh, Name That Tune. Thank you very much, GPC. Check out their uh, link in the description and uh, use the discount code, which is uh, TNL10, 10% off stuff. And uh, John Lawson with a $10 super chat. Ken, why don't you write your own book of puns? Ah. No, 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 no. It's a great idea. That's the opposite of a great idea. That's a wonderful idea. Jeff, isn't that a great idea? We need to have a talk. Thank you for that. I do have a book I'm trying to put together of of snarky replies to uh, comments that I get on videos. Yeah. It's called Comment Below. And uh, hopefully it'll be out by Christmas. Anyway, Jeff, thank you very much for the news. Uh, take one more drink, one more sip for us all. Oh, dang straight, yeah. Mmm, <laughs> that goes down nice. If you dang dropped straight. a match on that, would you lose your eyebrows? <laughs> <laughs> I refuse to answer that question on the grounds that it may incriminate me. Thanks for stopping by. Now get out. Ah, that Jeff. Yes, he's reverted to drinking. Mm, reverted? Oh, you're right. He continues <laughs> to drink. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly, um, now, now we're going to bring X-Jet in here in just a minute, but I wanted to share another yeah, video yeah. with everybody. Okay. But before that, here is Kelly with... The first of many wonderful jokes of the evening. What do you call a big pile of kittens? What? A meowton. Alexa, tell me a joke. <laughs> Did you hear about the cow that tried to be a comedian? No. His jokes were so bad he had to move. Far away. Oh, I beat her on that one. Yeah, oh, you did. Oh. I think you won that one. I think you won that one. So I've got lots of great video from Minefield, the Minefield meetup uh, on my birthday. If you're watching and you don't know what it is, just scroll back when you're done watching the stream and there's a couple videos about it. I think we're going to do it again next year. And I thank everybody for coming out. It was such a wonderful time. I didn't know how many people were going to show up. You know, we got to have all this uh, COVID stuff going around, germaphobes like Kelly. And, uh, but people did drive very long way and traveled a long way to, to be there. Um, there was a guy named Mr. Glass who drove all the way from Florida oh, wow. to be there and then had to turn around and go back for some reason. Now, a guy named JD, who was staying in the, ho in the motel that was right next to Minefield, has an interesting story about why he had to go. Check this out. All right, guys, so... It's 7 in the morning, the day of the event. I had my alarm set to this time anyways, but I was sleeping through it, and all of a sudden I got a pop, 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 pound at my door. I was like, what in the world is going on? Kind of fell back asleep, pop, 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 pound at the door. Well, there's a guy here uh, named Glass, I believe, if I could, I think I got that right. Um, he drove all the way here from Tampa, Florida. He drove a thousand miles. Uh, to come to Ken's birthday bash here and uh, <laughs> he said he had to go back all of a sudden so that's unfortunate but he wanted to put the party supplies in my room so we got some booze Ken we got some paper plates got the good old quad sitting there and there's a cake to come so I got the party supplies yeah isn't that isn't that a weird story I saw you holding a cake I think on Instagram yeah, I held a cake, and I also held the booze. <laughs> so I thank I thank Mr. Glass for providing the party supplies. Um, and I later found out why he had to turn around and go back to Florida. Why is that? Because he watches the horses from 
one of his neighbors and there was a storm coming or something. And he had to get back and take care of the horses. He sent me a oh. picture of one of the horses and I'm going to show you the picture. But be warned, you are about to fall in love with this horse. It is the sexiest horse you've ever seen, even if you're not into horses. I don't know if the horse is married, but you're going to want to marry it. This is the sexiest horse you will ever see. Are you ready, Kelly? Prepare yourself. I, I think I'm ready. All right. Oh. Yes. My pretty pony? Yeah. Wow. Yes, please. <laughs> what kind of what kind of horse is that? She's so beautiful, but but why the long face? Hey! There's the comedy. All right. Okay. All right. Let's let's bring in X Jet. He's in New Zealand. And he's a very interesting cat. Yeah. Uh, Kelly, here's... <laughs> while I'm dialing him, why don't you uh, give us another joke? Oh, Metro Drones, $20 Super Chat. Happy TNL Droners. Ken Kelly, yo. Thank you very much, Metro Drone. I met met him out at Minefield. Uh, what? The, who's the owner of Minefield? Who owns that giant monstrosity? Billy Tripp is the artist. Billy Tripp. What do you think of all this, man? He, Did he have fun? He loved it. He was in his workshop the whole time, and uh, once in a while, the drone would go by and crash and uh, he would come out and, and and I have some video later I'll share he come, he came out oh my goodness is it okay you know like worried that we're breaking it <laughs> nah man we crash these things all the time such a nice guy for letting us do that that's cool all right hit me with a joke oh Helvetica and Times New Roman walk into a bar and the bartender says we don't serve your type <laughs> font jokes. I like that. That's actually pretty good. All right. Wait for Bruce Simpson. X-Jet. Ladies and gentlemen, is he here? I think he's here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bruce. G'day. You, you, yeah, g'day. You look younger. You, you've been working out? Oh, well, I went on this X-Jet channel and there was a link in the bottom to support the channel, so I went and bought this from Banggood. <laughs> but I'm gonna I'm gonna take it back. I think sending pictures back to China. It's not safe. Bang no. good. I get it. Because you bangs, right? Oh, bangs. That's better. Hey, hey, hey. Welcome <laughs> to the stream, man. Oh. Thank you so much for coming. Who's the guy? Guy? I've never noticed this, but who's the guy from Breaking Bad? Bruce looks so much like that dude. Yeah, Walter White. And do you get that a lot? Man. Yeah, I do. Okay. Now I'm covered in all this cheap Chinese hair. Still. You know what? I didn't even I didn't even realize that until you mentioned that. He does. You just need that that Walter uh, White hat. Yeah. Wow. I'll get one of those. I was going to do a, I was going to do a parody of one of the scenes. You know, the one with the the RV and the when he when he's in his underwear. I thought I'll do that and put it as a trailer to my channel. Well, I tell you what, you might get a lot of marriage proposals if you put any images of you in your underwear up, because you know the ladies. <laughs> um, yeah. So, for so a strike. <laughs> Bruce, you, you, uh, I admire you very much with what you do. You, uh, your videos are just so informational, and you've been, you've been. Is that a proposal? Is that a proposal? Ken? <laughs> Put you the wig back on. Yeah. First of many. <laughs> I'll lead in the dance. Uh, <laughs> uh, how long have you been doing RC stuff? About uh, over fifty years. Really? Okay. Well, I have yeah. to ask you what, well, um, from your perspective, what, what do you think of the evolution of of RC, I mean, it really is lately is just kind of whoosh, taken yeah, off. It's great, excellent. Yeah, all change is good, and and the stuff we're doing now I couldn't have dreamed of when I started in the hobby. You know, we were carving things out of balsa wood, and my first radio control models had rubber powered escapements. You had to wind them up uh, a rubber band, and that drove the escapement, which then turned the control surfaces. And we had a transmitter with just one button on it. That was for the rudder, so you had the choice of go left or go right. So you could choose which side of the airfield to crash on. That's about all you had. <laughs> And uh, did anyone back then, was there a camera light enough to put on a, on a RC plane at all? No, we'd, we'd, we'd have to get the film developed. It'd take too long. We, you know, oh, that's no right. Use yeah. it. <laughs> FPV, the best you'd have is a squirrel with a crayon there, you know, relaying commands back. But no, no, there was a whole different thing. My first FPV flight was in about 2005, I think, and that was using a... It was a 360 line camera and a LCD screen and it almost ended in disaster. You couldn't really use one of those old Super 8s, could you? No. <laughs> it was just too heavy. 
Oh, here I am, flying over New Zealand. It's lovely. Oh, wait. <laughs> and the film gets all stuck. Um, so what I really want to talk to you about, Bruce, is your, your, your beef that you have with uh, aviation authorities in, in various countries. Me? Well... I don't know what you're talking about. I, I tell you what, and <laughs> good on you for pointing out the hypocrisy of, of the CAA in particular, the Civil Aviation Authority in New Zealand. I, I saw your video where you, and I'm not going to tell the story, but uh, you pointed out, you, you, I love it when people shine a light on the hypocrisy of authorities. And very briefly, if people who didn't see that video, uh, what, did they, what did they try to do to you uh, with their, their warning? Yeah, they tried to uh, warn me for flying and uh, well, breaking the rules, basically, but um, they, they had a whole lot of stuff wrong. Um, these are the people that require, if you have a pilot's license, it's your obligation to keep your logbook up to date and accurate. And if you don't, there was like Phil Rudd, the drummer from ACDC, he got a $750 fine for not keeping his pilot's logbook up to date because he lives in New Zealand. So they took him to court, $750 plus $150 court costs because his information was out of date. So CAA looked at a few of my videos and they sent me a warning letter saying, we think you were a bad boy. And they sent it to an address I had lived at for six years because they don't keep their records up to date and accurate. And I'm thinking, <laughs> hang on a minute. You someone, you find somebody 750 bucks for this. How much are you going to get fined for doing exactly the same thing? I, I don't sit out to make regulators look stupid. I give them the opportunity. It's up to them to take advantage of it. But in this case, it's it's been a it's been an ongoing um, series of embarrassments for them. And the latest one was that they have now broken two acts of parliament in respect to dealing with me because I filed what we call an official information act request where you legally, if you ask for some information about you, the government department has to provide that within 20 working days. And on the 18th day, they sent me an email saying, oh, we can't meet that deadline. We're, we're going to extend it, which they can't. They've got to ask me if I want to extend it. Um, so they broke that Act of Parliament, the, private, the, the Official Information Act. And then by sending my information to an unrelated third party who lives at the address that was six years old, they broke the Privacy Act in New Zealand. So they're persecuting me because I might have just breached a, a small regulation with my tiny drones, but they're breaking Acts of Parliament in doing so. I mean, seriously, you know, you've got to call them out on that. You know, oh, absolutely. The rules are good enough for me. They're good enough for them. Yeah, it's it's it seems like it's a comedy of of errors, but in all seriousness, how how do you deal with that? I mean, do you just point out what they've done wrong and they'll admit it and they'll say they're sorry? Or I mean, you have to take them to court. No, <laughs> no one ever admits anything. Yeah. All I'm doing is, and I said this right from the beginning, I'm documenting the process because somebody complained about some of my videos and they were under obligation to investigate them. So I thought this is a good opportunity for everybody to see what's involved. If you have a complaint filed against you for flying your drone, what can you expect? So I have documented every step of the way, I put all the correspondence online. I have told people about the conversations and everything so people can see what to expect if they're in the same position as me and it's not a pretty picture because the level of competence is very low on the part of our regulator and my my perspective is if you can't even keep your records up to date what right do you have to tell me what's safe and what's not you're not here you're not privy to all the things that are happening um you've just got a little rule book and the thing that annoyed me most was as they said any non-compliant flight is a danger to aviation, which is why I flew the little tiny drone in my garden beneath the roof of my head and I a roof of my house. And I asked them, please explain how this is a threat to aviation. And I think the response generally is sort of, well, if there was a helicopter in your backyard, you could hit it. <laughs> yeah, you, you know, it's uh, it's very frustrating to know more about this stuff than the authorities. And, and but well, yeah, it, it, I actually I had to educate the invest one of the investigators. He was unaware of some of the regulations. He didn't realise that drones and radio controlled model aircraft are subject to exactly the same set of rules. I had to explain that to him. He was quite surprised to find that out. This was the guy that was investigating me for non-compliance with the rules. And I'm thinking, this is not going to turn out well. That was the first indication I had that these people really don't know what they're doing. Well, was it well received the uh, the education? <laughs> Oh yeah, he was he was glad that okay. he'd learned something. Good, good. I mean, you really shouldn't be in that position unless you know all your your facts, right? And it's not just a fa exactly. a matter of not knowing about aviation and being an aviation authority. It's also, it seems, a little bit of just uh, improper procedure and and not updating their database because 
I mean, you haven't lived at 56 well, that, Author Street in, in a while. <laughs> the thing that really annoys me is I, I hate, I abhor people that say, do as I say, not as I do. Hypocr hypocrisy is the worst thing you can present me with. I cannot stand hypocrisy because it is the worst form of dishonesty. And that's what I've been presented with, hypocrisy. Every step along the way, it's been, do this. Well, we're not going to do what we're supposed to do, but you have to do what we tell you. And I'm thinking, no, you are, as an agency of the government who's set there to preserve aviation safety, you should be setting a, an unequaled example of compliance, an unequaled example of efficiency and noting, sticking with the details and things. You shouldn't be expecting of others what you're not prepared to bring to the equation yourself. Kelly, you look like you wanted to say something. Yeah, it sounds like if you move every six years, you're totally in the clear and you'll be fine, right? <laughs> oh, move. Yeah, yeah. That's one well, might looking at it, I suppose. But it's obvious that they, they didn't even check my address because I couldn't have undertaken the flights they alleged I'd undertaken from the address where they thought I lived. So th did they even investigate this stuff? I don't know. Did they? Did you tell them about the whole address debacle, and did they respond to that? Yeah, yeah. They said, "Oh, but but the the letter was delivered. We've got proof it was delivered." Oh. And I said, "Yeah, but you haven't got proof it was delivered to me." <laughs> right, right. You know what's 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 sad in in this country, uh, and I imagine you have a little bit of in yours as well. Um, you know, local authorities know even less than the aviation authorities, uh, and you you would think that they would uh, reach out to the community to get information from those who use the rules every day in a practical sense. Um, wh yeah, how how yeah. is it going to pan out in the future for, for local authorities where, where you live uh, about educating about this stuff? Because drones aren't going away. There's going to be a lot more people on, flying in certain places. There's always going to be local authorities everywhere in the world putting up no drone signs in places they don't belong. So, you know, how's yeah. I had, yeah. to, I had to fight for five years to get the right for people to fly their drones in the parks here. The, the local council was so opposed to it. It was going to, uh, it was going to injure people. It was going to bring down the aircraft. It was going to cause the skies to fall. Oh, that because they were ignorant. And they didn't want to know. And it took me five years to educate them to the point where finally they understood and they accepted it. So now we can fly in some of the parks around here. And but but it's a very very slow process. And the worst thing that's happening now is here in New Zealand they they're going to they're looking at introducing just like America they want registration, licensing, a UTM, remote ID, all those things they want to bring in. And I basically said, no, you're not. Are you um, going to have to go to court for any of this stuff? Will you go to? Are you willing to take it? To to you know where it oh, needs to go absolutely absolutely because it, it I've, I've sort of i have organized I, I structured this whole thing so that i could control the process because i don't want them controlling it so I, there were three complaints that were filed and the way the policy works is first of all they've got to educate you then they've got to warn you and only then can they take you to court so they have skipped the education process because I was telling them about the rules, so it's a bit of a waste of time trying to educate me when I know more <laughs> than you. Uh, then, So they sent me this warning letter. So on the next investigation, they are going to have to take me to court. And the next investigation is into my flying my little, where is it, this quad here in my backyard oh. under the roof line of my house. Apparently that represents a threat to aviation and they have no option but to prosecute me for that so that i'll have to stand up in front of a judge and explain why i was so reckless as to fly this thing in my own backyard no higher than the, the windows of my house i gotta tell you you're probably the last person that they want in court <laughs> am i right <laughs> i think so <laughs> one of the one of the keys always pick your fights carefully i hope they haven't learned that yet yeah and uh, speaking of picking fights, uh, now you didn't pick this. It was put upon you, and you were just defending yourself. But uh, you were robbed by the FAA. Yeah, they stole my video, eh? That's typical, another bureau bureaucracy. And again, you were saying, you know, they never acknowledge, never apologize, apologize never acknowledge, because they used my video footage. And I, I said, hey, look, you're welcome to use it. Just, I just want my attribution back. You've cropped out my watermark. Put my watermark back and put a link in the description of your video to the original footage and I'll be happy. But no, they didn't acknowledge. They took the original video down and they re-edited it at cost probably to the American taxpayer and changed the footage and put that in. Uh, so, um, yeah, it's like we can never admit liability or, or wrongdoing. Um, it's always someone else's fault. And so you, you live with that. Yeah, uh, Kelly, the FAA uh, or someone at the FAA, some graphics person, uh, video person, <laughs> used one of XJet's uh, video clips in what was it an instructional video there's something it was a that safety was video yeah, which, yeah i was happy for them to use it in the safety video yeah but never asked for permission or anything mm -hmm. ne never give for you credit 
No, that's the thing. I, a lot of people use my videos, and, and generally, I'm happy of them to do that as long as they leave the watermark in, which I put there for a reason, and then they include a link back to the original video so that people can see if there was something else associated with that video. It's promotion for me. It mm -hmm. gives them the use of my footage, but it promotes my channel. So that's a, that's an exchange of value, which anything that works has to be a balanced affair. So that's a balanced exchange of value. When someone takes your footage, deliberately crops out the watermark and doesn't give you an attribution, that's stealing. <laughs> no, yeah. you're you're right. And you had uh, a similar thing happen. Was it with? It wasn't with Casa out of Australia. It was in, with another place, and they did apologize, right? Yeah, one of the compilation videos where people, you know, make these clips out of all stuff they they flog off the internet. I found they'd used uh, the same piece of footage, so I contacted them and said, um, "Look, you're using my footage. Uh, you didn't ask for permis permission. You cropped out the watermark. What would you like to do about it?" And they said, oh, we're terribly sorry. We thought it was, you know, Creative Commons. We'll offer you $300 for the use of the footage. And I said, no, I don't want the money. It's not about money. I said, as long as you put a link in the description of your video to my original video, I'm happy. And they said, done. So it took like an hour and the whole thing was sorted and everyone was happy. They were happy. I was happy. That's what the FAA could have done, but they didn't. Wow. Yeah. Hypocrisy and injustice. Uh, very irritating things to have to deal with in this world. Yeah. Um, so what what is the population of New Zealand? It's very dense. Most of them are. Um, it's five million. Five million. Okay. And the population yeah. overall, are drones well received there? If you go out and fly, are it's people like giving you the stink eye? <laughs> It's like everywhere in the world. Fortunately, I live in a small community, so everybody knows me. So when I'm out flying my drones, I hear people saying, G'day, Bruce! G'day, Bruce! And as okay. I'm walking past, I can hear them when i got my goggles on. Um, but generally, it's like everywhere else in the world. There are some people who, through ignorance and fear, which is cultivated by the media, they think as soon as they see a drone, it's spying on them. It, it wants to you know, capture pictures of them in their in their bedroom at night, even though it's midday and it's in the park. <laughs> uh, you know, and, they, and it's too noisy. It's too noisy because... It makes a noise, so much noise that apparently it can still sneak up on you and catch pictures of you when you're not looking. I don't understand the dichotomy, the paradox there, but apparently they understand it all. But there are a lot of people who, I, when I go out, I usually take a spare pair of goggles and show people. And they, they when people actually get to experience FPV, they're wrapped. Oh, where can I get one of these? How much does it cost? You know, all that sort of stuff. So it's mainly ignorance that people makes people, you know, uncertain or fearful of these things. Right. Once you show them how cool it is, how fun it is, and how non-dangerous and non-spying it is, then People usually come around. Speaking of which, this is a good point to, to mention that I have these for sale. This is the uh, just flying, not spying shirts available. This is the uh, <laughs> this is the hoodie one. You can get these. I'm selling them right now. There's a link in the description if you want to get one. Bruce, would you want me to send you one of these? Yeah, I'll anything. I will, free shirts. Yeah, great. Love them. <laughs> awesome. And what are you what are you flying? Uh, most these days, the the tiny whoops. Are are you out doing fixed wings? What kind of things are you putting up in the air these days? Well, I'm flying less and less because of the Parkinson's a bit of a problem. So I, I used to fly every weekend. These days, it's probably every second weekend, maybe every third weekend. Just depends because I've got to make sure I don't use up all my. If I use start using too many meds, and the side effects become quite uh, irritating. So I try and use only the bare minimum of medication, unless I'm going to go flying. So I'll save them up and then you know have a good weekend or something. But uh, I'm flying quads, fixed wing, and even little tiny whoops, although these apparently are a bit of a danger to aviation, so I try to avoid these. Mm. Um, but I've been <laughs> spending most of my time making this. What is that? That's my ADS-B belt alarm. This is a little device, well, it's a belt alarm. You can put it on your belt, but more likely you'd just put it on the ground. And it has an ADS-B receiver, and you can set a perimeter. You can say, I want to be a, a, alerted whenever an aircraft comes within, say, two miles at an altitude of, say, 500 feet or lower, or 1,000 feet or lower. And when an aircraft does, it will then alert you, makes a, sounds an alarm so that you know there's an aircraft coming. And if you're flying a drone, that gives you plenty of time to get out of the way. Cool. Nice. Will, will that detect other drones if they had ADS-B on it? If they had ADS-B on, but there aren't any that I know because most of the drones have ADS-B in, but not out. They don't broadcast their location. But because of the way aviation is going, most countries are requiring that all aircraft that fly in controlled airspace have an ADS-B transponder. So I've been having a sitting here and watching the airliners go overhead and, and light aircraft coming and going to the local airfield. So it, in New Zealand, probably a good 95% of the aircraft, maybe more than that, have ADS-B fitted. And in the USA, pretty soon it'll be probably close to the same sort of number. So it's not, a, it's not a silver bullet. It won't detect every aircraft, but it does, you know, increase the level of safety by alerting you when an aircraft that has ADS-B is entering your flight area. 
that's cool. Is this something that you're going to make available to everyone else, or are you going to? Yep. Just... yep, it's open source. I'll be putting all the plans and everything online and the software online. People can download it and make their own versions or do what they like. This whole thing cost me 120 New Zealand to uh, put together, which is about seventy-five dollars US. Wow. Well, I have I have ten dollars towards it. I can give you this. Somebody sent me a. Uh... <laughs> one of these you guys have the coolest money oh, look yeah. at that you can see that right yeah. through there so who do you know who this who is this person on you it says it's a uh, kate shepherd who is kate shepherd yeah she was the she was the suffragette in new zealand that got women the vote i think new zealand was the first country in in the world to give women the vote hmm. oh wow that's cool and she was instrumental yeah oh uh back to patrick back to your gizmo what are you going to call the gizmo you got a I name just got for my it? adsb alarm that's not very inspiring, is it? Oh, no. Call it the X-Jet I'll call it Ken. I'll call it, it's Ken. It's yeah, a Ken. Yeah. Yeah, I'll take that. <laughs> uh, so so you're creating devices and systems that are making flying safer, yet you're yeah. a hazard by flying your little whoop <laughs> in the backyard. Yeah, I, I can see yeah. where. Yeah. That's right. That's the, that's the issue I have with CA2. I... I preach the safety rule. I mean, I say there's only two rules you need to fly a drone safely. That's don't endanger people, don't endanger property. It's simple. If you follow those two rules, it doesn't matter what else you do, you're going to be safe. And people can remember two rules. Remembering hundreds of rules in a great big manual, not practical, but as long as you don't endanger people or property, then you're pretty good. You're right. You're good to go. So I don't believe that rules, you know, as they say, was um, Harry Day, the World War One fighter, I said, rules are for the obedience of fools and the guidance of wise men. And I believe that's very true. So I take more practical steps. I, for example, have recommended that anyone that goes flying just goes and buys a cheap scanner on the aviation band. You can buy them on eBay for 30 bucks, secondhand ones, old Radio Shack ones, and tune it to the local operating frequency so you can hear the call, calls of aircraft are making. So if there's an aircraft or a helicopter coming through, you'll know ahead of time, even if it doesn't have ADS-B, if they call up, you'll hear them coming well ahead of time. Little things like that, practical things you can do to dramatically improve safety that don't involve rules or anything. And I, I think education, awareness, and, and the right attitude are the things that you need to be safe, not a big pile of rules and someone run, rushing around with a big stick beating you if you don't follow them. Absolutely. Uh, you've got some uh, pretty big fans in the, in the chat right now. If anybody watching would like to ask a question of Bruce, uh, feel free. Uh, Kelly will flag those down and, 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 and get them to you. Are you a manned pilot as well? You are, aren't you? Who, me? Yeah. No. No, you're well, not. Have you seen the way I fly? I wouldn't get in, I wouldn't fly a full size plane. I'd last five minutes. Okay. You know? All right. <laughs> what's what's the largest uh, the largest fixed wing you've ever flown? I had a large thermal soaring uh, flying wing glider, which was twelve feet. Oh wow! Wow. Is, is there is there a big FPV uh, community in uh, New Zealand? There are a lot of people flying yeah yeah it's pretty active actually it's pretty active There's a lot of guys in the drone racing scene a lot more in the freestyle scene and even our club most people fly fpv okay what do you prefer do you prefer fpv or fixed wing for fun well i do fpv on both multi well, i mean i mean multi i'm so, sorry but let yeah. me clarify multi-rotor or fixed wing my bad yeah both I mean, well, I, I don't draw a distinction because it's like you spend a couple of weeks flying multi rotors and you think it's great, and then you get a fixed wing. You think, oh, this is great, and it's like the digital analog FPV thing. You know, I've got analog and I've got the DJI digital system, and I put the digital on and go, wow, this is fantastic. Look how clear that is. And then I put the analog on and go, wow, this is better than I remember. This is still great. It doesn't matter. It's all good. Do you think the future is digital though? Do you think the analog is going to go away? I don't think it'll go away because, for example, you're never going to get digital in something like this. It's right. just, it won't fit. <laughs> so yeah. there's always going to be a place for both. It's like, you know, it's it, nothing has actually superseded anything else. There's always legacies. They have vintage flying, you know, with the old nitro motors and the and the tissue and the bolts and things. It's still there. Nothing goes away. Okay. We got any questions there, Kelly? Uh, yeah. Jacob in the chat with a simple question. How long, Bruce, have you been into FPV? And so I think my first flight was about 2006. So that's about 14 years or something, is it? Gotcha. Uh, Victor in the chat says, please ask Bruce about Opotiki Drone Free Town. Did I say that right? Opotiki. 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 I think they, they announced that they were going to be drone friendly from memory. And so they sort of made an announcement. We are drone friendly, inviting people to come. I don't know if anyone went, but it was a good move on their part. I don't know if they've changed since then, but that was a few years ago. Absolutely. I think more towns should do that just uh, for their economies. You know, you bring people into town just like we did with Minefield. It was a... Uh... 
a big boon to the little town of Brownsville here in Tennessee. Everybody enjoyed that. Yeah, the big problem was small towns is they tend to have small town mentalities because, I mean, our airfield, I get visitors well, before the COVID thing. I'd get perhaps 200 visitors a year from around the world that would come to the airfield because they'd seen the YouTube channel and they wanted to get a selfie by the tower or something, you know. Um, it's a huge, it could be a much bigger tourist attraction. And that tower was actually featured in a movie that, that went straight to DVD. So it's a famous <laughs> landmark. It's our version of Hobbiton. And, but the local council, not interested, not interested. Don't want to know. Huh. And now you're, you're called X-Jet because you work with jets, right? Used to. Yeah. Uh, Tell us a little bit about that well, and the origin of your uh, X-Jet name. Uh, well, many years ago, well, I had a, I had, at the time, it was the world's most widely syndicated web-based news service. It was in the late 1990s when the internet was about this big. <laughs> and so it was easy to be the biggest of anything then. But it was bigger than BBC, Fox, um, CNN. It was even bigger than Playboy.com in terms of the amount of traffic it got. <laughs> and so I, I sold that business and retired. I had money, I had time, so I started building jet engines because it was always an interest. I started building pulse jet engines and I came across some interesting things and I applied my analytical mind to it and it came up with an, a pulse jet engine design that was far more efficient than the ones they used on the V1 flying bombs. And I called it the X-Jet because X was the unknown, seemed like a name I could use. And I actually built a cruise missile which had an X-Jet engine on it and that got me into even more trouble than I'm in now. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, how many... Flying things do you have in your house? Everything, all all in. How many things can well, you put up in the air? I, I have a hangar. That probably tells you a lot. <laughs> oh, wow. You have a separate building. Yeah, I have a hangar at the airfield. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, yeah, it's probably got, it would have probably close to 100 aircraft and quads and things in there, models and quads. Huh. Awesome. Kelly, are there any more questions? Um, I didn't see any more in the chat, but here's one I've got for Bruce. Let's say you and the FAA get on the same page. They call and apologize for stealing the video. Um, you mend your way, you know, you you become friends. And then they say, Bruce, we're going to fly you to America. We want you to figure out a way that we can bridge the gap between the FAA and the local authorities so they get on the same page and there aren't these problems with local authorities giving drone pilots fits with not knowing the rules. How do we bridge that gap? How do we uh, extend that uh, olive branch between these two bodies to make things better? Well, it's interesting because the FAA are the regulators. They're the federal regulators. The local bodies can only probably uh, tell you where you can take off and land. They can't control the airspace. And exactly. It's been made very clear. Yep. So uh, what has to happen is it's all about education. It's like the council here. I spent years and years banging my head against the wall, but I just kept going, just kept going. Nothing would wear me down. Eventually, they probably thought, oh, we've had enough of this. Let's get rid of them. Let's let people fly their drones in the parks. And so you, tenacity is a, is a great thing. You've just got to keep hammering away because people change, attitudes change, and eventually it'll all line up and you'll get the right people in the right positions of authority and they'll go, oh, okay. But I think this is... We're at peak drone regulation now. People are afraid of drones because of what the media has told us and the uncertainty and all the new technology. And like when cars first came out, you had to have a man with a red flag and fire a gun 200 meters or 200 yards ahead of an intersection (laughs) so that your car didn't scare the horses, the gun did. I don't know. It was like there was crazy, crazy rules and restrictions on cars because people feared them. They they loved horses, you know, especially the horse you had on before with the lovely long mane. They were beautiful. But Mm. cars, not so much. So we've got the drone situation there now where (laughs) people fear drones. They're going to they're going to photograph us in our, in our bedrooms, they're going to steal our babies, you know, all that sort of stuff. But and give it another five or 10 years, and the fear will have subsided, and the regulation will be backed off a bit. People will realize that most drones are just people having fun. And the whole thing will die down, and we'll get a slightly relaxed look on things. And people won't think twice then about drones, because once you've got, yeah, right, once you've got Amazon and Pizza Hut and Domino's flying overhead all day, dropping bits of pizza while they're delivering it. <laughs> You've got to realise, well, drones are here to stay. You know, why are we all worried? What was the big fear about? But that won't happen. I mean, it's, I, I have to say, one of the most satisfying things I'm aware of is that there are companies pouring millions, hundreds of millions of dollars into the drone industry because they believe that they're going to have drone deliveries from business to house. They're going to have flying taxis with, you know, unpiloted flying taxis, all this stuff. They think it's going to happen and they want a slice of it. What they don't realise is, it's just not going to happen. 
there are far better ways to deliver stuff than totally flying agree. a drone across town. Yes. And and they're going to lose all this money. And this is why so many people are, are trying now to get so much regulation. And they, the big thing, the money spinner is going to be that this UTM or, you know, this traffic management system, UTS, whatever you want to call it. That's where people see they're going to make a fortune because all these drones will have to register and pay the monthly subscription. There's a lot of money in that. But what they don't realize is that there isn't because they're just not going to be that degree of traffic. In the UK, is a town called Milton Keynes where they are doing drone deliveries by little wheeled vehicles that move along the footpath or on the sidewalk. And it's working extremely well because you can get hours and hours and hours of, of operation out of a single charge. If they break down, they don't fall on someone's head mm -hmm. and they can carry 10, 20 times the payload that a flying drone can. So these little wheeled vehicles, they're the future of deliveries. It's nothing to do with flying over your heads. So all these people spending this money trying to develop these UTM systems, they're going to find that all that money's gone down the toilet and I'm going to have a big smile on my face. Totally yeah. agree. It's it's all about the new wow factor. It's because it's it's all new and cool. Do you remember when you could make a phone call by pulling out the, the phone in the back of the seat in a plane? I, re oh, yeah. I, I remember that. I was like, hey, mom, guess where I am? 30,000 feet, mom. I'm really cool. Well, you know, you, those are gone. <laughs> you know, they're, they're fads. And uh, drones are here to yeah. stay. But I, tr I, too, don't believe that uh, drone delivery will be a real thing. Now, of course, getting some plasma, uh, some hospital supplies from one medical center to another, zip like that, in the same city... That that's cool. Maybe you know, so those uh, what yeah, are they that's called? The a panels. tiny, tiny little market. Yeah. very, very small. It would yeah. happen like you know, once a month or once I don't know, whatever. And never underestimate the ca carrying capabilities of a really good rider on a motorbike. They can get stuff from point to point really quick through thick traffic and winter. And if it's raining or blowing or there's a storm, they don't care. But your drone does. Very true. And nobody's going to pay. Uh, sixty dollars for tube socks via drone just because it's cool. They'll do it once. Hey, I got my tube socks. Here they come. You know, I mean, it's just r ridiculous. And the so will that t-shirt you're sending me will it come by drone? <laughs> no, I'm I'm gonna send it by donkey, all the way to New Zealand <laughs> by donkey. Fifty six yeah. Arthur Street. Yeah, I'm gonna send it. <laughs> do you did, did did you you hear anybody anything from fifty six? You some of your viewers have no. saying I want to send a cheese basket to fifty six Arthur Street. <laughs> <laughs> Just say, sorry in advance of <laughs> all the postcards you'll get. But, uh, uh, Bruce, thank you so much for, for doing what you do, for being a great ambassador to our hobby and uh, an advocate for all these wacky rules and, 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 you know, just focusing your positive energy in the right direction. We need a thousand more Bruce Simpsons, my friend. I'll see what I can do. All right. Yeah. We'll get cloning. We'll get cloning. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Bruce, uh, what time is it there in New Zealand? It is 17 minutes past one in the afternoon. Is it? Is it in the afternoon? Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought yeah. it was AM. I got, I got all mixed up. All right, good. Well, go have lunch, <laughs> take a nap, and uh, thanks for being yeah. on. We appreciate it, man. Thank you. All right. Okay. See you guys. Good, good night, you, my friend. All right. See you. Well, he's nice, isn't he? He's a great guy. Oh, he's, uh, Bruce. he's a terrific guest. Nobody great beats guest. Bruce. I could talk to him all night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can soak up a lot of knowledge just by listening to that guy. He's very wise. Yep. All right. Now, here's Kelly with a joke before I play one of the uh, viewer videos that I have. I was playing chess with my friend, and he said, let's make this interesting. So we stopped playing chess. Ha <laughs> ha! I like that. That's a good one. I figured you'd like that one. That's yeah, a good one. Like that. Yeah, you know, because chess sucks. Yeah. Right. right. You, you have to explain <laughs> it. I mean. Oh, my gosh. I, I totally missed our co-chat from Philip. Oh. $5 uh, super chat. Thanks, man. Greetings from uh, PCB. Sorry I missed birthday bash at Minefield. Hey, you think we can convince Bruce to come to the Minefield next year? Absolutely. If you can convince me, convince him. We'll deliver him by drone. And ladies sides. and gentlemen, entering the arena right now, it's Jimmy J. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you, Jimmy J, for the $5 super chat. I'm still waiting for my flying car. Yeah. I don't know if that'll ever happen. Until they, you know the, you know that cartoon, The Jetsons? Uh, there's, there's no really, they don't show you what the propulsion is, except that it goes 
So whatever's c- making that kind of propulsion, <laughs> when that happens, then we'll have flying cars yeah. and all the re- moving sidewalks and the jetpacks and all the things that we talked about. Uh, okay. So uh, do you want to bring Ashley in now? Yeah, what she she's just going to come in and talk about mind is she, or is this kind of a swerve and she's going to be my contestant? No, 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 no. We're still going to play uh we're going to play name that tune with someone who's Dutch. His name's Rob, Rob. Muller. It's going to be Muller time here in a minute, but yeah, let's go ahead and bring Ashley in. All right. Cuz I know she's standing by. Uh Duncan, Duncan Longden with uh oh, what is NT? What is that? The 150 somethings. I knew it before. Is that news? That's Nantucket. Nantucket. Droning up a mountain, I saw a woman coming towards me on a narrow path. I didn't know whether to block her passage. Hmm. Good thing I proofread these. Thanks, man. Hey, what about what about Jason last week with all his drone jokes? I was impressed with that. That was really good. All right, now here is Kelly with the best joke of the night. Been saving this one. Yeah. Calling out the big guns. What kind of shoes do ninjas wear? What kind? Sneakers. Yeah, that wasn't good. That's what you call not good. Even with I'm the frozen. even with the wink and the gun. Yeah. Is I'm Ashley do this here? For the rest of the show. No, all right. There you go. Thank you, man. Thank you. Uh, Ashley, you there? Ashley. Uh, no, Ashley. Okay. Uh, the, the scattered s- thought. Thanks, man, for the five hours. Hey, everyone. I'm so in for next year's minefield. Sorry I missed it. Looked like a great time. It really was. And I want to... Where the heck is Ashley? Does she know it's Ashley. Thursday? Does she know it's Thursday? I haven't seen her in the chat tonight. <laughs> Usually she's chatting it up. Yeah, she says she's not on. Let me go ahead and oh. text her. Stand by. Oh, somebody tried to call me. Who was it? Was it? Your mom? No, ah, bill collector. Oh. Uh, yeah, I got to get her on because I want to talk about uh, the new channel. I'm, ma- I'm making the oh. new channel. You're going <laughs> to blow the lid off that today? Yeah, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it. I'm going to do it. Uh, okay. Uh, Ash. La. I'll put her on speaker. Ash. La. Hello. Ashley, where are you, baby? <laughs> I'm online. What's that? I'm online on Skype. I'm here. No, you're not. I, I have Skype pulled up. Well, I'll try again. Okay, bye. Okay, bye. <laughs> She's <laughs> using the different Skype. <laughs> All right, let's see. Oh, NT is Taiwan dollars. That's what it is. There's another 150 of them, whatever oh it is. Oh, my. Thank you. Yeah. Ashley, if Thanks. you're watching, you're using the wrong account. Thanks, Duncan Longden. You're using the wrong account, Ashley. You're logged into a different account. So we'll get back to her in a minute. But right oh, now, Ashley. Uh, John sent in a picture. John says, hey, Ken, greetings from Northern Ireland. I wanted to check your opinion and recommendations for drinking the Raz. What do you think? Is it okay to drink the Raz, Kelly? No. It's not? I never drink the Raz. You know you know some of the things that go into the Raz? Even if it's oh. in a can? Look at that. They don't have Raz in a can? Yeah. He says it might just be an internal force multiplier. And that's from 200 John. milligrams of caffeine. Oh How my much? Now that, that'll Raz you. Oh, that, yeah. You razz yourself right into the emergency room. <laughs> uh, uh, wow. Well, this, the show has gone off the rails. Let me go ahead and call Ashley back. Ashley. Ashley. Hello? Ashley, what are you doing? Hello? Do you know how to work Skype? <laughs> I have it open. Okay, well, I just tried to call you. It, it never rang? Huh. You might want to restart that. Uh, okay, I'll restart it. Oh, wait, oh, wait, wait. Hold on. It shows you're online now. Let me call. Calling. Okay, it's ringing. Okay, bye. <sighs> I thought I'd have to, I thought I'd have to mansplain how it worked. Oh, my God. <laughs> you see, Ashley. honey. 
You see, honey, what you I'm, do is. <laughs> I've been sitting here just waiting for it to like do, 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 do. And I'm just like, well. Well, welcome to the show, Ashley. Hi. So now is your opportunity to let Kelly know what he missed by missing Minefield. OMG, Kelly. You missed one, the best ultimate grilled cheese sandwich I have ever had in my entire life. Minefield Grill, delicious. It's really one. good, yes. It's true. Mm. Two, I now know what all these crazy people in the chat look like. <laughs> Metro <laughs> Drones was there. Yeah. Ready, said drone, SSH drones of D&D aerials. And then everybody was so nice. 400 AGL, Mel. He, uh, he <laughs> popsicle sticked uh, an FPV camera to his fixed wing big old plane. And we went for a fly, and he did a little loop de loop, and I got to wear the little goggles. Yeah, you hadn't you you hadn't uh, <laughs> ridden a shotgun in FPV flight until no, then. No, never. And then you missed it. Somebody was flying around, and we were all trying to tell him, "Hey, watch out! There's a water tower there." And the next thing you know, you hear, "Doing." Yeah. And uh, are uh, are you still on your first bottle of wine tonight, or your second? I just got home from a from working, Kelly. So I don't. I had Zaxby's. Yeah, I mean, because you know yeah. nothing soaks up the wine better than a chicken sandwich. All right. <laughs> so let me let me go ahead and play. I wish I had wine. Let me let me play a little bit of the stuff. Uh, somebody chased me. You know, I had to go to the bathroom, and we used before the restaurant. We used the grocery <laughs> store next door, and some knuckleheads f following me. As I'm going, I'm trying to walk across the parking lot. This is in the morning, probably around 10 a.m. when it first started. <laughs> Do you know who it is? Yeah, it's Walker Young that's doing this. This is his video. <laughs> There's a bunch of links to all the huh. all the minefield videos in uh, the description of this video. And my minefield video, if you want to check that out. Ashley, do you think you could fly an FPV drone quad? Oh man, I don't know. Watching them, t watching everybody like take off and have to think on their feet, it made me nervous. Cause, cause look at this bruise. Do y'all really think that I can think on my feet? What, what happened? What is that? Did you break your arm I for felt... a seventh time? <laughs> <laughs> Ashley, didn't no, you break I... your arms? You broke your arm like how many times? Three times each. She broke each arm three times. Yeah, but no, I fell up. I had to come home for lunch yesterday, and I fell up the stairs, and I clearly <laughs> caught my body with my arm. <laughs> and then I proceeded to fall down four. Like, once I hit it, it was like... Doo -doo 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 -doo, to the point where my neighbor, I heard them go, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I hear beans in the background. Yeah, she's... Well, I just got home, so I didn't have time to feed her, and so I shut, I shut the door, and now she's mad that the door shut. Is she enjoying she's National hungry. Dog Day? Well, I celebrated her. Good, good. By the, by the way, I like your purple eyeliner. It's blue, Kelly. But That's thank it. you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Speaking of dogs, look at Scooby in the background. Aww. She is so cute. It looks look, like she's, she's got her leg up. In the, she's dreaming. She's dreaming. She's got her leg up in the air. Yeah. Hold on. Let me. I'll get some sound effects. Hold on. For when I love she, her. For when she's twitching. Hold on. <laughs> when her little leg goes. <laughs> nice. Oh, Scooby. It's so cute. Uh, w... Did you do something nice for Henry for National Dog Day? Yeah, I fed him today. Mm. I said, you know what? <laughs> Today's the day. It's been long enough. It's been, what, like a week or something? I'm going to go ahead and feed you, buddy. Uh, <laughs> WHM3 with a five hour super chat. Ashley touched my mask. My wife what? is going to put it in a DJI box and give it to me for Christmas. Oh. <laughs> so excited. What? So let me tell you about that guy. Yeah. Let me tell you about that. Actually, so, uh, let me tell you about his wife. Mm. And listen, if Lisa's not watching, get her in the same room with you because I'm fit to call Lisa out in front of God and everybody. Oh. So I, I met Montfield Grill, just minding my business, eating my ultimate grilled cheese sandwich, right? Yeah. He comes up. He's like, wow. Hi, hello, I'm this, that, and the other thing. This is my wife, Lisa, 
And I was like, hi, Lisa. And the first words out of her mouth, I just think you're really obnoxious. <gasps> oh, cat fight. Yeah. <laughs> Did I miss a cat fight? <laughs> I just was like, I'm just here minding my own business, Lisa. Dang, you didn't have to attack me like that. Wow. But then we started talking, and I really like Lisa. Oh, good. You know why? Cool. She, she's jealous. Her husband's in love with you. That's what it I is. Touch his mask. Yeah, yeah. She re she recognized I gave it the, the old one too. The... Nobody touches my man's mask. <laughs> 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 All right. Before it gets too weird, um, let me share a few more things. A few more videos from people. Uh, someone made kind of a creepy birthday song for me. This is this is oh. their music. They sung this themselves. This is their video. Again, links to all these videos in uh, the description. Check this out. Happy birthday to Ken. Oh, no. Happy <laughs> birthday <laughs> to Ken. Happy And then here's Zamboner falling to its death. Zamboner. <laughs> Look at it. Remember it got perched and he filmed it. Look. Yep. And it hits. Oh, wow. Bunk. Oh. Ooh. This is, <laughs> this is scary. Here's Billy Trip. Yeah! Was uh, was Zamboner totaled? Did, was it completely destroyed from that fall? No, no, it, it nope. hit a thing and uh, and people caught it for me. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. Oh, so many great adventures that day. And I decided to climb the tower that didn't have any steps. It was very cool, Kelly. So many drones at the at the top with me. Look at all the drones flying. One, two, three, four, five, six. Look at that. Wow, look at that. Yeah. I'm in uh, in this tower up here, and they're all flying around me. Isn't that cool? What a it great was so day. Cool. Yeah. Do you have the megaphone? I didn't bring the megaphone up, up with me. I got you. Yeah. Uh, 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 but he did say once he got up there that all he could hear was the sound of the drones and he said every now and then Ashley I could hear your cackle yeah so that's the only thing I could hear I could hear the whir of the drones and then once in a while <laughs> like that like that uh, here's some video from uh, Ken Dono of uh, he, this is um, a Cinewhoop that he's flying I don't know why I climbed the tower, but I think I'll do it every year until I can't. You should. It was really cool. Is it stairs or like a ladder? It's stairs. It's stairs, it's stairs but there's no... It's just the framework for the stairs. There's no actual stairs. Oh. You see? Yeah. Yeah, see? So I had to step on the outside the whole way up. Oh, dude. Oh, that makes me so nervous. Yeah, isn't that crazy? But there are so many great places to fly through. This is a backdrop for an old drive-in movie theater. And then there I am among all the drones filming up there. That's why there were so many drones in the air. They knew they were going to catch a fall from you. Oh, 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 wait. Hold on. There's there's one part that I wanted, I wanted to show you this. Check this out. Okay. Prepare for the widest FPV stance ever. <laughs> As he comes back. <laughs> 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 That's the most stable stance I've ever seen. You don't need to lean. You don't need to sit in a chair. Just stand like that. You won't fall over. Awesome. Oh, I thought he was going to fly through his legs. <laughs> that would have been cool. Did yeah. you have the mini? Did you take the mini, Ashley? 
I did, but and I'm so embarrassed. I'm so embarrassed because let me tell you why. We got there and I was talking to everybody and I was seeing everybody do do the flip de doos and the West Mahoosets and the everything's and I got nervous and I never flew mine because I got scared. Oh, were you intimidated by all the awesome pilots? I really was Aww. because I feel like. I have such a big, you know, like I'm supposed to be really good at this because I know you guys and like there's everybody's so nice to me. And then I get there and I get nervous and I got stage fright. I get nervous. What is this? <laughs> is this Chinese finger puzzle? What is that? What are you doing there? I got, I got nervous. <laughs> she actually can't do that when she's sober. They won't come together when she's sober. Uh-huh. Wow, Kelly. Um, all right. I have so one cool. I have one more video I want to share. And this is from Mel, 400 AGL who I think should do horror movie voiceovers. Uh, check this out. Come travel with me on a journey back in time. Okay. To the 22nd day of August, 2020. The infamous day. A man by the name of Ken Heron hosted What the FPV at Mind. No one really knows why he climbs the stepless stairs to the lookout tower. <laughs> Some say he does it every year on his birthday. <laughs> he enjoys so much capturing his moments in video. He almost always has a camera at hand. True. This concludes this episode. Be sure to tune in next time as we explore more of Ken Heron at the Mind Field. Wow. You know, I really enjoy it when people put videos together at the peak of when their medication kicks in. I love that. It's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait till you're peaking. Wait till you're peaking, then make the video. That's the, that's the stuff right there. Uh, so Ashley, are you going to come next year? Oh, absolutely. And I'm not going to be as nervous because let me tell you something. I don't know. I don't think you used my extra footage, Ken. I left you a little love message. You did? I didn't get your love message. On your camera too? It was before we did all the giveaways and I left you a little sweet little love message. Really? Yeah. Well, fine. Since you didn't see the footage, I'll just redo it here. Oh, oh yeah, snap. please. Do I you do, do you need any music? What do you need? Um, I need something um touching and heartfelt and emotional. Oh, this is good. Yeah. So I grabbed your camera too. And I walked I walked away for a second and I faced it towards me and I said, Hey Ken, it's Ashley. And I just want to let you know happy birthday. And I mean it, because look at all these people here to celebrate you. And like you brought all these people together. And we're all flying, all being goobers together. And we're all crashing together. But you know what? We're having a good time together. And they were all here for you. And we just hope you have a good birthday. It was, Kelly's laughing. It was heartfelt. I'm it really so was. Mad. You know what? <laughs> you know, in all seriousness, it, it really did. It, it moved me. How many people showed up? during a pandemic, <coughs> Kelly, and, and actually came out to, to hang out, the, the people that truly care about me, <coughs> Kelly. It was it was a great day. <laughs> but I did leave, I'm so upset that you didn't have, you don't have that footage because it really was just a little happy birthday. I, I have it somewhere. I just had to edit really quick and I just, I didn't ignore you. Thank you, actually. Last time I leave you a little love oh. message. No, that's, that's awesome. I appreciate that, Ashley. And and uh, and to thank you properly, you know what we're gonna do now? What? We're gonna play a game. Oh yeah! You know the name of the game? By the way, say pick me, pick me. Is it is it one second song? Am mm. I here to kill Kelly? No, it's Ashley's nature clip. <laughs> oh no! For the, I forgot this was a game. Yeah, yeah. For, well, we haven't played in a while. For those who, and by the way, um, pick two people, but don't say their name. Me or Kelly? Um, both of you. One of you pick somebody and the other pick somebody. 
If, All right. if you're new to the stream, maybe you haven't seen this game before, Ashley has a hard time reining in her emotions, let's say. Face. Her face. She has a very expressive <laughs> face. And so, if she can watch this clip from the world of nature, it could be disgusting, it could be wonderful, it could be horrific. But if Ashley can watch this without making any kind of face, well then, we're going to give away... Henry. I'll give yes. away Henry. And a gold bar. If Ooh, not, we'll give away a tonight. consolation prize, which will be... And you can stop saying, pick me, pick me. You guys got somebody, right? I got somebody, okay. yep. nah, I'm still, I'm still waiting. Okay. Freewellgear.com. <laughs> <laughs> Lag. Freewellgear.com. ND filters will be the prize. We thank them for providing the prize. Thank you so much. So we got it. We got somebody. So how does this work? Because we each have a contestant. How does mine win and how does hers win? Right. Uh, Kelly, your person will win the gold brick and yep. Henry and my car and everything. If Ashley can watch this without making a face. Oh. The person that Ashley picked will win a, the free will filters if she does make a face. So it's a consolation prize. Let's switch it because she could throw the contest. Let's make her contestant. She can't make a face. Oh yeah, okay. That's that's good. That's a good idea. All right. So. I support whatever. <laughs> All right. Let's see. I, now I'm gonna disappear for a minute. I know you'll miss me, but I'll I'll Bye. be I'll be I'll be right here. Uh, see you, dude. See you, dude. Wait, no, that's not it. Oh, I didn't set this up in the shot. Wirecast. <laughs> okay. So what I'll have to do there is I'll have to Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That and the other thing. Uh, I'm gonna have to go over here. And then I'm gonna have to do this. And then I'm gonna have to bring in So Kelly, burp, you still got them kittens or not? I do. Do you want one? They're no longer kittens, they're small cats. So they're teenagers? Um, they're toddler kittens. There we go. All right, you ready oh. for the... Speaking oh. of kittens, uh, this this features a kitten. Oh. Make this full screen. Are you ready? Oh, oh dear. Ready. All right. Ashley, try not to make a face. Jack's getting ready to throw up. <laughs> Look at that baby. Babies? Everybody's throwing up lately. Trifle was throwing up this morning. Oh. <laughs> oh <that was> Thank <laughs> God you did it on the floor, or not. Oh my gosh! Oh my God. <laughs> You've had too much to eat. <laughs> oh, it's not over. <laughs> oh my oh, goodness! What? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. Your thoughts, Kelly? Oh. That's the greatest thing I've seen online all month. <laughs> it was cute at first, but then not. Yeah. Time for Wait Ashley's. That, that means I've got the winner in my hand, right? Yes, yes, but I forgot to play the cool jingle. It's time for Ashley's Real Gross Nature Clip. It's oh so gross. It's oh so gross. It's oh so very gross. All right. <laughs> Ashley. And that was a lot of fun. That was, wasn't it? And what's the first thing wow. when, a, when a cat or a dog uh, vomits? What's the first thing they do? <laughs> Start <it> eating it. <laughs> what? Okay. So the winner, <laughs> because Ashley did make a face. Who won, Kelly? Captain Mavic. Congrats, Captain Mavic. You got a set of uh, Freewell filters. These are from freewellgear.com. These are for the uh, action camera, the DJI uh, Osmo Action. And these filters are metal and glass, and they are lovely. Are you okay, Ashley? You don't look so good. <laughs> How was there so much in that cat's <laughs> This and is. Why was <laughs> 
Russet brown and pure liquid. This, this is Ashley's <laughs> favorite game, isn't it? This is his favorite game of all time. I, Listen, I ate a lot of Zaxby's, and I didn't know we were going to do a nature ah, clip. Ah. And listen, if we keep talking about it, I might have to film my own. Like, <laughs> if she starts doing this. <laughs> uh, all right, let's cleanse uh, <laughs> Ashley's video palette. We can't leave on that note. Before we say goodbye to Ashley, let's have her stay for a viewer video, okay? Yeah. Dude, dude aren't you going to uh, throw the surprise out there? Oh, the new channel. Yes, yes. We'll talk about the new channel right after this video. This is from okay. Ed Rutledge. And it's some, uh, he says, check out this stand of old growth on Oregon's coast. Stay safe, Ed Rutledge. So this is uh, some old growth. And by that we mean big old trees. <laughs> big old trees. <laughs> so how do you think the trees feel when they see their brothers and sisters being cut up for a walkway right in front of them. Oh. <laughs> Look at that. How old is that tree, man? Let's see. They need to just put that thing out of its misery and go ahead and cut that thing Whoa! down. Whoa! No, Kelly, I would say that that is tremendous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. I've never seen what, uh, what kind of tree is this? I don't know. It's a it's a big old tree. The big one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not an arborist, but I know that's a that's uh that's from the family biggest trees. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow, wow Man. Even beans. I don't know if y'all heard beans back there, but even she was like, wow. Beans threw out a little wow. Yeah. I'd like to know how high he is right now. How tall is that thing? Wonderful. Thank you for sending that in, Ed. We appreciate it. If you want to send in a video, wow. you can. You can send it right up there like that. Ken Heron Upload at gmail.com. Make sure that you include your music source because if it ain't epidemic sound, it's crap. Mm. <laughs> Isn't that a good that's tagline? Official, that's a good. Uh, that's their official that's motto. A, yeah. If it ain't epidemic, it's crap. All right. Uh, all right. So, yes. Uh, uh, while I have the three of us here, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly, <laughs> <laughs> Kelly, you okay? I'm. I think I'm good. Okay. I think All right. Gonna throw up a little. Do you need some epicac? Do you remember that? Epicac. What is that? I've heard. I remember that name. What is that? Yeah. Uh, I think it's an old timey medicine. My grandmother used to give me when we were sick. Oh, honey, you're gonna up? need some epicac. Yeah, when you were feeling ill, it's an actual thing. But but when the medicine sounds like. Vomiting itself, it doesn't help, does it? Epicat, epicat. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, we need to play some scary music. That's not it. No, 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 no. Oh, Scooby. Eh, yeah, that'll have to do. So I got a new channel. Hang on. Yeah. Hang on. I think somebody's breaking into my house. Oh, right okay. Now. You go ahead and take care of that. Speaking of scary things. Yeah. Wow, I, Kelly Kelly's wearing shorts? Yeah, right? There's some really dressed down. Fifty four year old legs hanging up on the back of his I don't know. And now here's Ashley with Judges. a joke. Here's Ashley with a joke. Y'all remember that time I <laughs> fell up my stairs? <laughs> okay. All right. And he's back. So is and there music. Is is there anyone? In the chat, let me know in the chat. Anyone into ghost hunting? Me, me. Now you, me. Ashley, you believe in ghosts, right? One hundred thousand percent. Okay, and I know that there's no such thing as ghosts. Uh, Kelly, your thoughts? I'm on the fence. I've never seen anything that would make me a believer. I love scary movies. I live for scary movies. My favorite movies are scary movies. So, reality, not so sure. But I sure love watching the fiction. Okay. But if you were in a, a, a scary haunted place that's pr proposed to be haunted, would, would oh, you... Oh, I'd be scared to death. You would. Okay. All right. Me too. Now, I might be scared if I was in a haunted place and it was dark. You know you know all those ghost shows? They uh, show them hunting in the dark and with, with oh, yeah. like IR cameras and crappy flashlights. 
Well, I thought, wouldn't it be more fun to ghost hunt in the light? <laughs> so, us three, we have created a, a paranormal group. And we have a logo and everything, and it's called... <laughs> Well lit paranormal. <laughs> <laughs> so, Man, we say well lit. We talk it well. Oh lit. yeah. The the idea, <laughs> the idea, yeah. The idea being that we're gonna go to all the same scary places that all these ghost adventures and ghost hunters go to. Only we're gonna go in the daytime with lots of yeah, light. Why, why would you go at night? Why go it's at crazy. night? When you're bumping into things. Right? Yeah. Oh, I tripped over you. What was that? I don't know what it was. Oh, I hit my head. Bring a flashlight. Bring go in the daytime. Uh, the logic being that if ghosts don't know they're dead, they don't know the lights are on. <laughs> am I right or am I right? I'm right. Oh, you're right. That's a really good thing to. Th that's a good question. Yeah. Ken. Right. So, well lit paranormal. There is indeed <laughs> welllitparanormal.com. There's a well lit paranormal uh, YouTube page uh, coming out, and we're gonna. We're gonna go. I fir our first place is Brushy Mountain Prison, right? Is that right? You're gonna arrange yeah. that. We're going to a prison. Yeah. Yes. I think I just saw a ghost dog walk behind Kelly. It was Where white. Is this? No, it was just an orb with a tail. <laughs> <laughs> That's how fun it's gonna Listen, be. Orbs are spirits. Orbs, whatever. Ashley actually has an orb on video. Yeah. Thank you, oh. Kelly. Oh. You get it. Yeah. Tell me about the get orb. It. Okay, well, it's up on my channel. It, it was a drone video, actually. Um, one of my second ones I was filming in the middle of the day at a cemetery. And it's like in the first 30 seconds, an orb floats by. And so I take it and I slow it down. And I'm like, did y'all see that? It's right there. It's the whole title is uh, I caught an orb on camera. Not clickbait because it's really there. Okay, we're going to check this orb out. Okay, let's do it. Let's, let's do, do it. it. Okay. All Let's right. Do it. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I know people are thinking, oh, well, Ken, if you don't believe in ghosts, why don't you go in, in a scary place? I will. With a flashlight. With the lights on. I will. Because I have a great imagination. I, too, like <laughs> horror movies. And I can dream up all this stuff that's, you know, the, all the ghosties. Uh, all right. So we're going to Ashley's channel. You should subscribe, by the way. There it is. Wow, 12,000 subscribers. Nice going. Thank you. Uh, all right. So where so is... Yeah. We're going... We're, okay, down, down. We're going way down. Oh, right there. Where? An orb caught on camera, lower right-hand side. Okay. Right there. Yeah. Okay. Oh, all we're right. in it. All right. Where's Did you the, see it? Where's the orb? It already happened. Did you see it? Did it? <laughs> oh, you mean the bird feather? No, that's not a bird feather. It's a bird feather. You're near a building. No. That's a bird feather. It even looks like that a bird feather. No, I'm in a cemetery. It was a spirit. You deluded. It completely disappears. You don't see it on the ground. Look at that. Exactly. Look, it's a bird feather. Yeah, where? Oh, where is it? Oh, it kept going, and it's on the ground. Okay, Ashley. No, what? You are, that's not okay. All right. Wow. That's wow. Oh, this is going to be so much fun. Well lit paranormal. <laughs> we are going to go, and we're going to meet. Uh, you know, it. All this footage you see best evidence so far and it's all like this green night vision i want to see a well-lit ghost that's what i want to see if you're a ghost and you can manifest you can do it in front of my flashlight that's all i'm saying or what if they're, what if they're self-conscious about their body they could be dead for hundreds of years and that's why they got to do it in the dark this now is going to be the funniest freaking thing <laughs> ever yes all right, so look for that new channel coming soon. Thank you for being a part of it, you guys. This is going to be a great... What do you guys think? Do you think in the chat? Let me know. Uh, do, do you think this would be a fun venture? Do and you think the orb is really a ghost? Because I think it is. Orb. So are we going to go to a cemetery in the daytime? <laughs> yeah, sure. So wait, hold on. Hold on. Here's my question. Yeah. How far are we getting into it? Because I don't know where y'all personally draw the line. I mean camera sure we gotta we gotta get that but like are we getting some dousing rods are we getting a ouija board you can are we do getting all a spirit that. box all that you could bring a, a psychic bring a psychic all that stuff whatever you want wait a minute i don't even know what a dousing rod is 
So they used it way back in the day as two rods you hold like this. People used to use it for water, but spirits can manipulate it so you can uh, find other things. I almost had to bleep her. Manipulate, sorry. I manipulate. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, bring all that. Bring all that boo shit. <laughs> I just, it is, I'm just, sorry. It's a, you know, whatever. Okay, yeah. And and all those gizmos, the bibbity boops, the thing that goes, scans the frequencies. It's like, Satan, whatever. Okay, okay. It's going, you know? Is, is the channel already set up? Can you get subscribers to a channel without even posting a video? <laughs> I mean, probably. <laughs> <laughs> but, but anyway, if there's any uh, paranormal people who are willing to admit that they believe in ghosts, uh, go ahead and uh, contact me here, Ken Heron Upload at gmail.com. I'm sure we got a few thumbs down. Just, I mean, I'm the skeptic, okay? I'm going to be the skeptic. Ashley's going to be like, Orb! And, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Kelly's going to be like, mm, as he hides under the bed, wherever we are. Now, if we were, if we were in like, the Allegheny Insane Asylum somewhere in the morgue. Would you would you crawl into one of the, the morgue drawers, Kelly? Now, the show is called, the channel is called Well Lit Paranormal. If it's all well lit, as long as the basement or the room or the chamber is well oh, lit. That's Kelly, the thing. No! That's the thing. You know, you can still get EVP. In in a, in a well lit room, you can still hear the knocks. Oh. Hey, if, if you're if you were murdered, knock twice. Okay. Why do I feel like this is gonna lead into you guys like uh, pushing me into oh, a world yeah. where they kept dead bodies, and yeah. then you're gonna be like, ask the spirit well, things. Well, now you murdered, knock twice, and then there's gonna be kid out there like. No, no, I won't do any of that. I promise. I won't make any, won't make anything, anything up. I will not do that. If there's any actual evidence, let it happen on its own. But uh, let's see. Of the three of us, who has the best reactions to things? Of the three of us, who believes in this garbage? Uh, of the three of us, who's partying? Let's get on the camera. That one. So yeah. <laughs> We're gonna we're gonna put you in the scariest, best lit room ever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm nervous already. Yeah. The light. Uh, all right. Awesome. Well, uh, uh, let let us let us know when it's time to go to Brushy Mountain. Listen. Let's pick a date. Let's go. Where is this? What state are we in? Tennessee. It's like oh. 45 minutes from my place. I got you. Yeah. 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 So you arrange it, James Ashley. Okay. okay. All right. Cool. We're we're on it. We are on it. All right, Ashley. Thanks so much for being on. Thanks for uh, being patient while I was figuring out what was going on. Love you, mean <laughs> it. Okay. Until now. Wait. Hey, which one of you is co-hosting next week? Let's work it out now. Scooby is okay. You're pointing to the wrong. Kelly, Kelly you're pointing the wrong way. Look in. <laughs> look in your. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Ashley, do you want to co-host next week? I'm here if you need me. Let's do it. Awesome. All right, Ashley. Bye. 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 Okay. Now, <laughs> now you're still there because I had to change it because Wirecast. <laughs> so, so we can't be as smooth. So let me go ahead. I'm going to click that. And then I'm going to click this. And then Ashley. Bye-bye. Captain Mavic. Thanks, Captain Mavic, for the $5 super chat. Oh, awesome. Thank you, Captain Mavic. She's still there. She's still there waving. You can't see her, but she's still there. Bye, Ashley, you whack-a-mole. Okay. All right, she goes. You got it. All right, all right. So, yeah, we're still going to play. Are, are you good? Uh, we're, we're coming up on, uh, I mean, it's getting late there, old man. Yeah, I changed into a pumpkin at 9 Central. Oh, I'm sorry. You were a question mark there for a minute. Uh, how much more time you got? Uh... Seven minutes and 41 seconds. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Level Drone RC, for the $5 super chat. Hey, much appreciated. Uh, just get a voice recorder, Ken, and talk. I bet you get a two-way conversation if you get nothing. 
I send you a Mavic Mini Fly more. Okay. So we what? have some believers nice. out there. Uh, 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 uh. And uh, Captain Mavic says, thanks for picking me, Kelly. Sorry I couldn't attend Minefield. All right. And we're not doing this channel to make fun of believers or make fun of these types of shows. We oh, just no. wonder why they never do it in the daytime. Why is the room never will, well lit? Right. Yeah. And wouldn't you see better evidence if you had more light? I mean, that's how cameras yeah. work, right? Good Go, point. I mean, the... The undead don't know that the lights are on. <laughs> and until I see a real ghost come up to me and go, hey, I'm a ghost, what's up? Okay, do you believe me now? So you've never seen anything? My mom has a story about when I was a kid. It's If you only have seven minutes, I can tell mm -hmm. you. You want me to tell you the quick story? I no, save your great story. I've got a great story. We'll save it for a Halloween show. Okay. My mom says I saw a ghost when I was a kid. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, really FPV with the five dollars. Another great show. Love all three of you. No, no. We love you more. Uh, really FPV. Thank you. All right. So uh, did that, did that. All right. We got 8-bit 80s coming up. Got to bring in our friend uh, Rob, who's in the Netherlands. And, uh, oh, goodness. Alexa. What time is it in the Netherlands? In the Netherlands, it's 4 a.m. Oh, good lord, we better call him right now. Yeah, let's let's call that guy. He's been staying up too long. All right. So, uh, this is where we're going to give away the Mavic Air 2 GPC case. While Kelly tells us a joke. This is big time. Yeah. Somebody's going to win a big prize during this contest. Oh, yeah. My wife told me I had to stop acting like a flamingo, so I had to put my foot down. <laughs> that's pretty good. I don't care who you are. That's, you pretty, that right. that's a pretty good one right there. Uh, and D&D uh, &D Aerial Views with a $10 super chat for that wonderful heron hat I can't wear for fear of getting it dirty. Oh, thanks, man. And I do believe we have our contestant here who is going to... Open up a hole in time if he doesn't turn off the television. I Rob. see me. Oh, fuck. Oh, geez. <laughs> Rob? Rob? Yeah. Okay, you got to turn off the stream. Yeah. Wow, that's a lot of lag. Turn off your television, Rob. There we go. Rob, turn off your TV. Rob, turn off your... Am I going to have to wait 17 seconds for him to hear me to tell him to turn off his television? If so, he has no chance in this contest. No chance. Are you, can you see Hello. us? Can you see us? Hey! All right. Can you see me right now, or are you seeing me in 17 seconds? Right now. All right. Welcome. All right. So, right now, it's time to say, pick me, pick me, pick me! Rob, welcome to the show. We appreciate you uh, supporting the channel. Okay. Good to be there. And um, go ahead and pick someone in the chat to win, but don't say their name. Write it down, and Kelly will do the same thing. And the prize... Oh, so Rob's not, Rob can't win the prize? No, no. No, Rob won't win the prize. Oh, gotcha. He's already good with that. So the prize is from GPC Cases. This is the Mavic Air 2 case, which accommodates the smart controller. If you want to get one yourself, there's a link in the description. You can go ahead and use TNL 10 for 10% off. And we thank GPC very much for sponsoring this. You guys have your... one so fast! Yeah. <laughs> All right, you can go ahead and, and stop saying, pick me, pick me. Do you have a contestant, Rob? Yes, I do. And do you have a contestant, Kelly? Got it. Is it someone that we've never picked before? I didn't recognize the name. Okay, and thank you, NSHQ, for the $5 super sticker. Stickers, I like stickers. Yes, I do. I do. Stickers. 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 I like stickers. More than you. One more time, stickers. And who do you have there, Rob? <laughs> Who is that? What, you want to know the name of the ghost? No, the dog. No, no, no. What's the name of your dog? 
Stitch. What is it? Oh, Stitch, like Lilo and Stitch. Right, you got it, Kelly. Oh, yeah, very right. good. Okay. Oh, and uh, Groom Lake Fisherman, thanks for the five dollars super chat. Go Bigfoot hunting in the day, and WHM three five dollars. Shout out to Ready Set Drone. I'm going FPV. Thanks. Big hey, Kelly, where's your big I, bad championship belt? I think I. Oh, oh. Ho, 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 ho. yeah. Uh, I, by the way, I think I believe in Bigfoot more than ghosts. Um, Rob, is there any way you can get closer to your phone or whatever device you're using? Because you sound like you're across the room, which you are. And Rob, please keep in mind, you're just a pretender, not yet a contender. The championship belt will not make an appearance tonight. Uh, oh, my oh, my goodness. All right. So uh, you're you're in the Netherlands. Yeah, that's right. And you are Dutch by birth. Yes, sir. And you lived through the 80s. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I lived. Um, actually, I lived in the United States in the eighties. Oh wow! I lived oh. In Florida, Florida. Okay. All right. So yeah, you've Let's, you've you've seen how Kelly uh, destroys all of his competitors. Yeah, I know. But um, it would be fair if you put in some Dutch songs as well, because otherwise it would only be Kelly that is a big advantage. Right. Well, I was going to do the uh, who's the, who's the, who's who's the biggest Dutch band. <laughs> I have no idea. I have no idea. Uh, the golden earring. Okay. Oh, oh yeah. Gold, golden earring was Dutch. Oh, yeah, they're Dutch. Right okay. Well. All right. Okay. So I'll play every single one of their hit. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So here we go. How's this is going to work? Okay. Is and don't look at the chat. You're going to have to turn off. Don't look at the chat. You're not looking at the chat, Rob. I trust you. No, no, no. I'm looking okay. at the TV. I'm seeing myself, and uh, there's no chat. Okay. All right, so I'm going to play 8-bit versions of 80s songs. I'm going to just start it and use your name as your buzzer when you think you know it. Yep. Okay? Well, well what does that mean, 8-bit versions? All right, I'll give you an example. Like the MIDI? Yeah. Yeah. This is, this is Enter Sandman by Metallica. Yeah! I dare you to give me a copyright strike on this garbage. <laughs> All right. So that's what they're going to sound like. It's it's 8-bit. Kind of like old video game music. Ooh, this is going to be tough. And I'll just play the song from the beginning. When you know it, use your name as your buzzer. Don't yell out the title. And I need title and artist. Uh, or, or you get to pass. Now, this is for a big prize. This is for the GPC case. Okay. So here we go. Feel free to play along in the chat. Here is the first one. Kelly. Yes, Kelly. Cutting crew, I just died in your arms. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yes. Wow. Uh, Kelly, you keeping score? Yep. All right. Oh, wow. Okay. Here is your next 8-bit song. Kelly, Kelly, yes, Kelly. Kelly. Yes, Kelly. Nana, 99 Luft Balloons. Woo! <laughs> Rob, what are you doing? No, I, 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 I shouted out my name. But, um... Oh, really? <laughs> uh, Rob, yeah, really. Oh, okay. When you shout out your name, also use your hand so I can see in case there's lag because okay. I think I think Kelly's audio yes, supersedes mean, yours. That was a good song, Ken. Of course I was first. <laughs> All right. Here's the next one. Kelly. Yes, Kelly? Naked eyes, always something there to remind me. Wow! All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to make this a little more difficult. Wow, Rob's not even on the board. Ah, okay. All right, here we go. Here's the next one. Kelly. Yes, Kelly? Quiet riot. Come on, feel the noise. Oh, my God. Oh my. Were you getting any of that, Rob? Did you get any of that? I didn't know that one. No, definitely not. Okay. All right. <laughs> wow. If it's a shutout early, we're going to have to do what they do in the Little League and just shut it down after four innings or whatever. 
<laughs> so it's not a blowout. All right, here's the next one. Kelly. Yes, Kelly. Kenny Loggins, Danger Zone. <laughs> well, people are getting it in the chat. They're getting it. They're getting it. Uh, wow. All right. <laughs> Uh, this <laughs> is reminding Kelly. This is a blowout. Okay, Kelly, you can't answer this. Uh, uh, for ten seconds. Count to something. Ten seconds. <laughs> ten okay. seconds. Here's the next one. Got to get him on the board. Yes, Kelly. Kelly. Yes. Kelly. Yeah. Journey, don't stop leaving. Yeah. Just a city boy for the raising something Detroit South Detroit or is it North Detroit South Detroit South Detroit Wow you should have known that one you should have known that one Rob I did tell you I'm where being told you. Oh, can can you hear the songs at all I, you you need yeah, to... yeah no it's totally clear I have no excuse I have oh. no excuse <laughs> okay hey Rob don't give us excuses give us results or get the heck out oh snap <laughs> all right I'll give you a few more well people everybody's getting these I thought it'd be harder than that all right here's the next eight bit eighties yes yes Rob yes. Uh, I thought it was Thriller from Michael Jackson Kelly. Because... Kelly. yes Kelly Eddie Grant Electric Avenue <laughs> you're right. <laughs> Wow. Wow. Okay. Uh, okay. This might be a little harder. Here's here's the next one. Yes, Rob. Uh, every breath you take by the police. Yes. And he's on the board. All right. Feels good to be on the board, doesn't it? Yeah, it does, man. Let's see. Here is the next one. Big comeback. Kelly, Kelly. Yes, Kelly. Tom Petty and Heartbreakers free falling. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Are we liking this game, you guys, in the chat? Let me know, because... There's 8-bit versions of everything in the world, and there's no way to get a copyright strike on that stuff. I regret it so much that I told people that I'm on TNL. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, mm. no. All right. I'm going to – I'm trying to pick – all right. Let's do a TV theme. All right? This is an 80s TV theme. Kelly. I saw Kelly. Rob's hand. I saw Rob's hand. Yes, Rob? Night Rider. Yes! Very good, very good. What's the score? Oh! Oh! All right. Let's see. Get out of there. Let's see. Belt. There might be, there might be. Uh, da, 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 da. No, no, not that one. Oh, no, not that one. Okay. This might be. I know Kelly won't th know this one, but will you, Rob? Oh. Kelly. Yes, Rob. Uh, bump it up by um, Kelly. Give it up. Um, I, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna give it to you. He knew it was pump it up. He knew, it's we're not gonna, even called pump it up. He didn't know the song title or the artist. Ah, you're right. What is it? Pump up the jam by Mars. <laughs> Uh, um, no, no chance to steal, Rob. What? Yeah. Bump up to jam by, um, yeah. bump up to jam. I'm Googling this. <laughs> <laughs> you should have your, your you should have your, you should have your wife off camera with Google giving you signals. Ah, Mars was pump up the volume. Yes, this is Technotronic. Oh. So, sorry, Kelly. Can't give you a point there. You almost had it. All right. That was... That was some that was some drama. All right. Uh okay, all right. Are you a rock guy? Rob? Are you a rock, uh, rock guy? Yeah, yeah kind of. Okay. Yeah. 
Because Kelly isn't. Yeah. Here's some 80s. I'm trying to help you, man. Here's some 80s rock. 8-bit version. 80s. You got nothing? Kelly, what do you got? got I have no idea. Yeah, that's Run to the Hills by Iron Maiden. <laughs> Whoa. All right. I'll do a couple more. Okay, okay. And then if you don't get the next two, we're just going to have to. We're going to have to little oh, yeah. it. All right. Here's the next one. If you don't guess by the time the lyrics come, I will sing it. The cap has come. <laughs> yes, Kelly? <laughs> no, that Sister you're Christian the only <laughs> one to say. Okay. <laughs> yes, Kelly. <laughs> All right. My colleague had that CD and played it to death. Oh, really? Ah. Uh. Uh, Hate it, uh, Night Rain. Uh, uh, I'm trying. There's so many. Okay. Huh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Here we go. This is this is the last. What's the score, Kelly? Kelly nine. <laughs> Rob embarrassed. <laughs> All right. This one's worth ten points. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Here we go. Last song. Save some face, buddy. Yes, Kelly. Forever Together by Rick Ash. Yes. You've been Rick Rolled, people. <laughs> to be together forever with you. <laughs> Rob started dancing. Excellent. <laughs> oh, that's it. Or is that Lilo? That's <laughs> it. Awesome. All right. Uh, well, that was fun, wasn't it? Uh, everybody yeah. in the yeah. everybody in the in the chat uh, seemed to like it. All right. How about how about one more? There was one I wanted to play because it was just so stupid. Oh yeah. Here, one, last one, just for fun. Kelly, Kelly, yeah. Kelly. Yes, Kelly. Yeah. And without hats, the safety dance. Yeah, because the eight bit sounds exactly like the original. <laughs> this is oh, safe behind, because if you don't dance, and yeah. Anyway, look those songs up, millennials. They're cool. All right, so Kelly won, and who is the winner of the GPC DJI Mavic Air Two case, and that. Winner is Mr. Menace FPV. Nice way to go, Mr. Menace. Uh, he's he's an FPV guy, but I think maybe he's got uh, a Mavic Air too. If not, it's a good reason to get one because now you got a place to put it. GPC, thank you very much for. Uh, Sponsoring this and Rob, thank you very much for what time is it there in the Netherlands? Uh well it was four o'clock when we started, so it is now um what's it seventeen minutes past four in the morning. So. Oh my goodness. What time do you usually get up? Um well we have to get up early tomorrow, so it's gonna be about maybe three or four hours sleep. But you, you go know, you go T <laughs> My life is complete. Oh well thanks, man. You go night night and uh was that is what disembodied voice am I hearing in the background there? Is that your wife? No, it's not here. Here. No, she was. No, she's in the kitchen. She wasn't talking. But. Uh, uh oh. It's a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I heard something. What's that? <laughs> you mean you don't see the ghost either? All right. <laughs> Rob, thanks, man. Yeah. Thanks, Rob. Great job, man. All right. Appreciate your support. 
We'll get you back on another see time. You, see you, bud. Bye-bye. All right, see ya. Well, and bye to you. Well, he was fun, huh? He was fun, but he did not... Uh... He did not give me a challenge whatsoever. You need to better select your contestants oh my next gosh. time. You're throwing shade when he's not even here to defend himself. Oh. Uh, all right. Hey, we got to talk about our buddy Jason Shepard at RemotePilot101.com. You're absolutely right. Because they are a sponsor, and I did pass for the 98% thanks to Jason Shepard and RemotePilot101.com. And you were sweating it, but you crammed, what, for a couple of days and then just went in there and blew the test out of the water. Yeah, I did. I took the recurrent course, which is available here. You can take the full course or recurrent course. Recurrent course, of course, is for people who already have their Part 107, and you can go back and brush up. Jason's always putting in uh, new videos all the time if there's any changes that are made, any regulations drop off. And one of the really cool things is a lot of the people, a lot of the members of RemotePilot101.com, the uh, RemotePilot101.com nation, as he says, they will give the questions, like tough questions that are on the test, the trick questions that the FAA comes yep. up with. Because you know how the government is. The government's like, oh, I'll trick you. I'll trick you. Anyway, use Heron18, H-E-R-O-N 18, to get 30% off, and that knocks it down to like 104 bucks, and that is for life. So, as long as you're a UAS pilot, you can always go back and retake your test. Every two years, right now, 160 bucks is what it cost me. And that's looming in my mind, too. You don't want to get this test wrong because you have to pay another 160 bucks to, to take it. So, yep. remote pilot. And he's got all these sample tests, too, which makes it really take a few sample tests, get the hang of it, get the feel of it. You'll know the questions going in. A lot of the sample questions are right there on the test when you it's go in. Very helpful. It's great cur curriculum. Study. Become Part 107 certified and make money with your drone at RemotePilot101.com. Love you, mean it. Somebody said your sister is in the chat. My sister, Julie? Or yeah, Charlotte? Yeah, so. Julie? No, Julie. I Julie Harold. There she is. Hold on, Julie. I'm going to make you a moderator. Let's see. She don't want to be a moderator. She said, how about some love? Boom! You're now, you got no. your wrench, Julie. Hi, Julie. Tell your sister how much you love her. Julie, I love you so much. Aww. Julie, do you remember when we were kids and like, I think you were three or four and I was three years older and, and uh, I used to trade uh, your dimes for my nickels because they were bigger. <laughs> remember that? <laughs> I did that to her. I did. I was like, Julie, don't you want the bigger coin? She's like, yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> That reminds me, when I was in third grade, there was a kid named Marty Gorgato, and he had all these really old baseball cards. Oh, no. I said, dude, I'm going to give you all these brand new baseball cards no. for all these really old ones. He's Did like, you? okay. I just, I don't know if there was dads, his uncles, his grandfathers. Did you do that? Uh, by the end, oh, I had every one of them. You don't want that old Babe Ruth card. Look, it's torn. You don't want that. Here, let me give you this uh, Kent Tecolve. <laughs> Dude, you throwing a real name out there. I nice, know, right? Nice. Sidearm, sidearm pitcher for the Phillies back in the 80s. Kent Tecolve. Nice reference. And you know who was catching? Uh, for the Phillies back then, Bob Boone maybe? Yes, Bob Boone. I've got the whole 1979 Topps collection somewhere. Nice. Yeah, that was my uh, college tuition plan if I ever had children. If there's any children of mine that come forward that need to go to college, I'll sell those cards. Good call. Anyway, Mr. Menace, thanks. $5 Super Chat. Your birthday rocked, Ken. Thanks for the case. Minefield next year. My three-year-old daughter even had fun. I flew the pipe. That's right. Uh, there was a drainage pipe in front of uh, in front of Minefield, and uh, he flew a little tiny whoop through there. Uh, oh. Beta, beta FPV through there. Cool. Uh, so anyway, hey, Julie, I do love you. I guess I, guess I owe you a few dimes. <laughs> Name this artist. Julie, 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 do, do you, you love, love me? me? And the only reason you know that is because... It's because my sister is also named Julie. Yes, yes. We both have Julies in our lives. Uh, what is the name of the artist? I used to know. Uh, Bobby Sherman. Oh, yeah. Uh, speaking of uh, birthdays, and we're going to play two, two videos. One will be the viewer video of the week, and then we'll get on out of here. 
But uh, in all sincerity, thank you everybody for coming out to make my birthday very special. <laughs> my friend Chris, uh, Sky Fox, he gave me this birthday card and everybody signed it. This is, because you know how I like what? farts. This is a dog farting out a birthday candle. And the best part? <laughs> yeah! Isn't that great? Nice. Thank you, guys. Classic. Isn't that that's classic? I love it. All right. Okay. Kelly, have you been to Chicago ever? I have. I, we, did, we took a tri family trip there and had a great time. The Chicago lakefront is one of the most beautiful places in the world. And uh, what a great place to fly a drone, which is what John Sheehan did. Says, uh, Dear Ken, I am fascinated by whatever you were talking about. And I can't wait to hear whatever you're going to talk about. Well, thanks, man. I wish everybody felt that way. Uh, in the meantime, here's some drone video I shot with my Autel Evo 2 near Soldier Field while it's been closed for all events this summer. The music was layered with tracks from Epidemic Sound. Copyright free music. Link in the description. Uh, and uh, catch the flavor of the city. Hope you enjoy John Sheehan. So enjoy this lakefront of Chicago. I gotta get back here. I filmed that same area myself. What a great looking stadium. Very cool. Isn't Chicago the third largest city in the country? Uh, I think you're right. Right behind New York and Los Angeles. Yeah. What an amazing skyline. I gotta get back there, man. We went up in, I think it used to be called the Sears Tower. Now it's called maybe the Wills or Willis Tower. Okay, I, I will tell you that uh, people that live in Chicago still call it the Sears Tower. They don't call it whatever. Sears Tower, okay. They don't call it whatever. And, yeah. And Jeff showed that clip during the news of the glass thing you could walk out on. Well, they've got one of those at the Sears Tower. You can walk out on a glass ledge and look down. It's pretty frightening. Did you do it? I did. Was it scary? And so did my wife, who's right here next to me. Let's see the wife. Ladies and Come gentlemen, in, if you've never seen his wife, Kelly did marry up. Look at that. Huh? How'd you marry above your station like that? How'd you, how'd you work that out? It wasn't easy, brother. It wasn't easy. <laughs> it's because you're rich, right? That's exactly right. That's it. Awesome. Uh, what's your wife's name? Krista. Krista. Does she spell her name with, with a K? A, does she put a little... Heart over the eye. Tell me she does that. Does no. She, no. She's not 12. Okay. <laughs> the 12 year olds do that? Is that, is that what they course. do? Okay. All right. All right. Well, show's almost over. Did I forget anything? Mm -mm -mm -mm. All right. Oh. What? What is it? Did I forget something? I always forget something. I don't know what it what it is. Seems like something always slips my mind. But uh, what, what what's that you say? The Raz. Ah, yes. Let's go ahead and head on into the Raz Chamber. Ah, the Raz. It's a lovely place. Everything's perfect in the Raz. Nothing goes wrong here at all. We're all just in our birthday suits, floating along, <laughs> pop, pop, popping along, not worrying about anything in the world. Let that purple Don't and do goo goo it. fill all of the crevices. Feels good, doesn't it? Now, there's it's only... kind of chilly in here tonight. 
I didn't turn the heater on. Oh. There's only one rule. One rule only. Kelly, what is that rule? No wind breakage or farting in the Raz. There's no farting in the Raz! Let's enjoy. <laughs> TJ Grady, you fought in the Raz! You son of a gun! TJ, I knew you were gonna do that! I could feel it gurgling! I could feel your stomach going, brruh, brruh. I knew it was coming! Dude, dude it, was, it wasn't TJ. Oh. Was the Julie dog? Harold. Was it Julie Harold? <laughs> Julie Harold! Don't fart in the Raz and blame it on <laughs> TJ! Shame on you, sister! Shame! She used to do that to me all the time! <laughs> she'd be like, in the tub! She'd be, she'd be like, and then run out of the room! I'm left there. <laughs> okay, I did it. Anyway, uh, Rob Muller with a two euro <laughs> needed the Raz after being destroyed by Kelly. It is he should be asleep by now, shouldn't he? He should. He's got three hours of sleep in his future if he can hurry up and doze off. All right, let's go ahead and get to the viewer video of the week, and it is amazing. Okay, this is great, great stuff, and it was sent in by our friend. Uh, Lars in Sweden. And uh, I'm going to give him some Freewell filters from ND filters from freewellgear.com as a prize. Congratulations. Nice. Hey, Ken. Here's some video from my other channel. Uh, Till, Tilly Team, Tile Team M, which has a focus on aviation. It shows Jordan's national pride and joy in an air display. The Royal Jordanian Falcons, which is just Falcon awesome. <laughs> and by the way, uh, a lot of people out there might not realize that Jordan is a country and not just a shoe. He says, we filmed their air <laughs> display at the Gothenburg Aero Show with four GoPros and two video cameras on the ground. Flergen Glergen. Lars from Sweden. Because, <laughs> you know, I'm always saying Flergen Glergen whenever I see or hear s Swedish. So... And my apologies, that's just how it sounds to my American ear. Oh, there's uh, two uh, Swedish people. Flergen, Glergen, Glergen, Flergen, Flergen, Glergen. So anyway, <laughs> my apologies. But uh, enjoy this. The Jordanian Falcons. It's an amazing video. <laughs> Kelly, you ever see an air show like this? I've never been to an air show. Never have. I went once when I was a kid. Fun? Really fun. But I'm always scared for the pilots all the time because, you know, and, and the older I get, the more I know it, what's at stake and how physics works. So I'm like, oh. Yeah, but, there have been a few tragedies over the years. But the skill involved with doing this and flying so close together is just incredible. But you can hear them in the cockpit communicating with one another with their prompts. Check it out. Wow. That's amazing. Wow, that's only part of the video. If you want to check out the rest, I think I put a link in the description. But that's uh, cool. th th thank you. Thank you for sending that in. Oh. Again, if you want to send something in, you can send it here. Ken Heron upload at Gmail. Dot com. If you want to send something to uh, my post office box, send it here. Ken Heron, Box 1281, Huntington, Tennessee, 38344. And if you believe in... A, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, if you believe in ghosts <laughs> oh. and you want to see one well-lit, uh, check out Well-Lit Paranormal. Yeah. We missed another super chat from Mr. Menace FPV, $5. One more thing. Why did Kelly not come to your birthday party? Ashley was even there. Kelly, you want to remind everybody why you weren't there? 
because I'm a germaphobe. We're in the middle of a pandemic. I'll be around a bunch of strangers. I don't know who's going to be wearing their mask. I don't know who's not going to be wearing their mask. I don't want to take any chances. I know. I know. You don't care about your oldest? Am I your oldest friend? Uh, no, nah, I got one other friend from high school that I'm still in touch with. Oh, no, I meant oldest as in age. No, he's actually... Uh, <laughs> Is he older well, than me? Probably, okay, all right. He's probably a month or two older than you. Oh, cool. Yeah, all right. Well, my feelings aren't hurt anyway that you didn't show up. Because I know you're going to come next year, even if things are this worse. This might be probably the first year in a long time I didn't get you a birthday present either. Sorry, dude. That's right. Mm-hmm. You didn't even Amazon me a card? You're, you're the Amazon card king. You didn't even send me a, a virtual Amazon card? You son nope. of a god! That's it. We're breaking up. It's over. Stand by. <laughs> He's doing it now. <laughs> anyway, that's our show. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Julie, for watching the show, my sister. We hope you enjoyed the show half as much as you would have if it had been twice as good. I want to thank everybody as he's actually trying to buy me a card right now before this music is over. Thank you very much to Jeff Sills for all the wonderful news in the drone newsroom. Thank you, Bruce Simpson, X-Jet, for making an appearance. You are awesome, my friend, and thank you to Ashley for stopping by. And uh, thank you, Kelly, for my birthday card, which is sent now. It's sent. Sent to me. It done? Uh, oh, 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 wait. What? what? Oh, what's that in the chat? What is it? Ah, oh, look at that. Four-hour super chat from Kelly. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Until next time, love you, mean it. Buh. And bye. Eh. <laughs>
to kill like a process me Enjoy pigeon jerky, pigeon jerky And you give your family a treat It's endless nutrition to help them grow And it's full of fiber to make them grow You enjoy pigeon jerky Yeah. <laughs> that was so funny.